in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Holy Spirit, indeed you are the spirit of truth. We have come to love you. We have come to believe in you. Jesus told us you will guide us into all truth. Jesus told us you would instruct us in the path of life. And we count you faithful on account of our confidence in your ability to help us that we are gathered tonight not unto a man not unto a sect not unto a doctrine but we trust your ability you were recommended by the Christ himself to help us and so Holy Spirit the great rabbi Tonight, cause the living bread to be open in our midst. And let there be understanding. Quicken us by the grace of the Spirit. Quicken us in the name that is above all names. Shake away religion from our lives. Shake away all the things that have the capacity to constrain us. For Lord, we realize that you are building an army. And we realize that not long from now, the shofar will blow. And Lord, we align ourselves as generals in the making. Subjecting ourselves to the dealings of the Spirit. Beyond church, beyond religion. Contending for the faith that was once delivered. Rising against the nominal concept of Christianity receiving a redefinition of what your life and power what the ability of the Holy Ghost in us is capable of doing Lord you are raising a generation of revivalists you are raising men and women who will love you unto death men and women who love you beyond the things we can get we thank you because our labor in the spirit will be rewarded in the open so we thank you thank you for your spirit lord for the presence of the holy angels the saints in heaven we're gathered around your throne. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. His presence is in this place to bless us, to help us, to take us to a plane in the spirit and to prepare us this is what God is doing in the midst of his people come on just sing in the spirit let a melody just come out from your spirit not pray sing in the spirit Paul said, I will pray in tongues. I will pray in the spirit and I will sing in the spirit. Lena Maramosi, 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 Lena Maramosi,
Lord, we are certain that our prophetic will appear unto all. Hallelujah. Listen. It's important to subject yourself. Listen to me. It's important to subject yourself in this season to the dealings of the Spirit. Hallelujah. For there is an operation of the Spirit in the body of Christ. Revelation 5. Listen to me. If at this point in your life you have not expressed dissatisfaction for religion and church, then there is a need to do an extra work in your life to catch up. Hallelujah. Because the Bible says the 20 and 4 elders, listen to me, that when they worshiped, they said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God. Who was, who is, and who is to come. These are dimensions of his operations that were revealed to the people. Hallelujah. And so we see a dimension of God who was. It's not a waste. But it's to tell you that God is progressive so he will not end in the dimension who was. And then they see who is. Hallelujah. That which the spirit is doing at the moment. And then, by prophetic insight, we have a revelation of that dimension that is to come. And so it's important that as we stand and begin to relate with the things of the Spirit in this day and age, that we are able to understand the emphasis of the Spirit for every time. The Bible says, for the sons of Issachar, they had a comprehension of the times. Hallelujah. And the Bible says... Among the organization of God's creation, he made stars. And part of the ministry of some of those stars is to be able to signify to the inhabitants of the earth when seasons change. To the end that we can align with the operation of the spirit. For even the past glory of God contains a measure of glory. The past revelation. But that it is not sufficient to take us to the next dimensions that the nations would require. And so it's important and it becomes a responsibility upon us as citizens of the kingdom to walk in pace with the Holy Ghost so that we are able to understand his operation. For it is an error to assume that God is doing the same thing at every season. Hallelujah. In the revelation I shared with us, a few weeks ago hallelujah that there was a feast and there were rulers there those who were honored Jesus was in their midst but they did not recognize him the wedding in Cana the first miracle of Jesus a prophetic message to what the Holy Ghost is going to be doing and the Bible says the old wine finished but the festivity was still on the rulers did not know because they had been used to deceiving the people and they had lost touch with the source of the wine are you following me now and the bible says the festivity was still on and there was a constraint happening but the people could not understand because there was no insight and the bible says only the servants followed mary the mother of jesus and they said jesus there is trouble the revelation of john which is sent to his servants oh this is the mystery that in this generation only servants will ride on horses the princes will receive an embarrassment because they will walk afoot hallelujah so the bible says the servants came to jesus 
They said, although there are many crowds, we are not confused about who holds authority. And we call ourselves servants and we come. And he said, fill six pots. And when they filled it with water, hallelujah, he said, take it to the rulers. And when he took it to the rulers, they tasted. When they thought the dispensation and the feast was over, little did they know it was about to begin because a new kind of wine. The Bible says the rulers did not know where that wine came from. Only the servant. hallelujah and so there is a transition and God is revealing things to his servants he said the Lord will not do anything but he will reveal his counsel to his servants praise the Lord then it's our responsibility to begin to search and walk in peace with the spirit so that we can understand the things that the Spirit is doing at every given time. There are certain revelations that we understand that have been sealed. The Bible says in Revelations 5 that there was a call in heaven. And that call was that who is worthy. So there are certain revelations that is not given freely. It's a contention. It's gotten by qualification. He said, who is worthy? To that one, he will be able to open the book and unlock the scroll. He said, no man was worthy to open the book. And the elder began to cry. John, why? Because in that revelation contains certain mysteries that should be opened up. And the Bible makes us to understand that the, elder, the angel tapped him and said, weep not. For the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, is worthy to open the book. Hallelujah. It's important to be in peace with what the Spirit of God is doing. And this is our desire in this place. The Bible says in the days of Samuel, when the word of the Lord was cast. He didn't say, men, stop going to the temple. But he said the word. Praise the Lord. So tonight, let it be that you didn't just come to do church as usual. Let it be that you came because you understand that receiving from God will position you to understand what He's doing in the Spirit. And by alignment, you become a benefactor and you become usable. It's not enough to be available. You must be usable. Hallelujah. And only the Holy Spirit is able to help us into this truth. So Lord, we thank you because you will bless us tonight. Lord, do not leave us behind. Let us follow up in peace with the things the Spirit is doing. In the name of the Lord Jesus. God bless you. Be seated. Good to have everyone around. Hallelujah. We are subjecting ourselves to the dealings of the Spirit again and again, every week, every week, week after week, month after month. We are subjecting ourselves as students in the school of the Spirit, allowing Him to teach us and to bring us into comprehension of kingdom realities. Hallelujah. Because a time will come when the dividends of this sacrifice will appear unto all. And we want to position ourselves. We are not careful to admit that not everybody is open to the things of the Spirit. Especially in this day and age where there are all kinds of Christian distractions. Hallelujah. The Church of Christ has become a place where ethics of religion are taken as usual but the presence of Christ and his body ought to be a place of freshness where we can communicate to the world what the spirit of God is doing at every given time mm. hallelujah 
Tonight I want to share something that I believe will be a great journey, a great blessing to our journey in the spirit. How many of you were blessed last week? It was a wonderful time of prayer. Hallelujah. If the things of the spirit are still a burden to you, then there is need to retreat in the presence of God. Hallelujah. There are lots of believers who have a problem with the things of God. And I hope we do not have those kinds of people here. Let me tell you something. Um, whenever you come for koinonia, make sure that you're not just coming to fulfill a ritual. Are you listening to me, please? Ensure that you're not just coming to watch other people. Or to see what are the other things. You must come with a predetermination. And say, Lord, what do you have for me that can help me in this journey? We are in a journey. I'm so happy every Friday when I have the opportunity to share God's word. Because I understand that there is at least somebody who is interested in the things of the spirit. And if God can find such a man, he can produce a wonder out of him. Praise the Lord. First Peter 2. Say after me, God is preparing an army. Say it like you believe it. God is preparing an army. Ask your neighbor, are you part of this army? Tell your neighbor, don't tell lies. Unto him who sits on the throne, blessings and honor to Jesus, the Lamb who was slain. Glory and power. Glory and power. Forever and ever and ever you reign. Forever and ever you reign. Forever. First Peter 2 verse 9. First Peter 2 verse 9. Hmm. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. It never said you are members of living faith, or Christ's embassy, or deeper life, or redeemed. Those are structures. You get my point? But I'm saying beyond the structures, you must look. It says, ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, an holy nation, a people of his own that you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So the Bible tells us clearly here that we have been called out of darkness. And given an assignment. Hallelujah. And that assignment is to show forth the praises. Of him that has called us out of darkness. Into his marvelous light. Hallelujah. And tonight we are going to be examining. How far we have gone in this journey. And obtain grace to press ahead. Hallelujah. The children of Issachar, the Bible says, had an understanding of the times. And as a result, they knew what to do. They knew how to align themselves with the things that the Spirit was attempting to bring. And not everyone 
is able to align himself to the things that the Holy Ghost is doing. You know why? Because alignment means that you have to die to yourself. Hallelujah. Alignment means that you are bending to assume a posture that may not be convenient. And so it takes a revelation bigger than yourself and your personal comforts to say, Lord, regardless of how this will affect me, I am prepared to come into alignment with your divine will. To the end that your plans and purposes be achieved at every given time. That as you search for men and women that you will use to do exploits. That you can find a vessel in me. The Bible says, but in a great house there are not only vessels of wood. Or gold and silver, but of wood and of clay. He says, some are unto dishonor. And some are unto honor. He says, if a man will purge himself. That man will become a vessel unto honor, fit for the master's use. Say after me once again, God is raising an army. And say, I am part of that army. I am part of that army. Led by the Spirit. Hallelujah. Joel chapter 2. We we'll just establish a few things. And then we'll pray. Let God arise. 2 verse 1. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the earth tremble. For the day of the Lord cometh. For it is near at hand. A day of darkness and of gloominess. A day of clouds and of thick darkness. Like the morning spread upon the mountains. A great people. This is the description of God's army. Please listen. A great people. And strong. There has not ever been like them before you cannot trace them to any history neither shall any more be after it even to the years of many generations they are characterized by a fire that devoureth before them they are men of fire confirming that which the bible says he maketh his angels wings and his ministers flames and behind them a flame burneth and the land is like the garden of Eden before them and behind them a desolate wilderness. Yea, nothing shall escape them. They are thorough people. The appearance of them is like the appearance of horses. And like the horsemen, so shall they run. Like the noise of chariots on the mountain tops, they shall leap. Like the noise of the flame of fire that devoured the stubble. Like a, like a strong people set in a battle array. Before their face, the people shall be much pained all faces shall gather blackness the bible says they shall run like mighty men look at this description they shall climb the wall like men of war they shall march everyone on his ways and they shall not break their ranks no competition no dabbling into unnecessary things everyone maintaining focus that's what watch my knee calls the limitation of the body the capacity to allow every member to function within the jurisdiction of their grace. The Bible says they will not break ranks. Neither shall one trust another. They shall walk everyone in his path. And when they fall upon the sword, can you imagine? They shall not be wounded. What an army. They shall run to and fro in the city. They shall run upon the wall and they shall climb upon the houses. They shall enter in at the windows like a thief. The earth shall quake before them. The heavens shall tremble. The sun and the moon shall be dark. And the star shall withdraw her shining. The Bible says the sun will no more give you sunlight by day. The moon will no more give you light by moon. It says Jehovah, the Christ himself, he will be your everlasting light. That means they will function from a different source of illumination. Not that which has been known. Are you listening to me? Because he made many lights. But at the emergence of the two great lights, there was no longer those kinds of lights. It's not like they were not truth. But they were no longer needed in light of the higher lights. Hmm. 
Let's finish up. The Lord shall utter his voice before his army. That means the Lord himself is a commander. For his camp is very great. For he is strong who executed his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible. Who can abide? Look up please. There is, there is a campaign of the spirit. The Holy Ghost is running to and fro. Across the length and breadth of this nation. The nation of Africa and across the world. Searching for men and women who will avail themselves to be used. Hallelujah. Every time before a Kairos moment in the earth. God begins to prepare a people. And the first thing he does is to begin to beckon on them. So that they willingly offer themselves and say we are available. Are you listening to me? We are available. And then he separates those people. And begins to subject them to the trainings that will equip them for his agenda. Now the very difficult thing is this. Separation is a very difficult thing because it entails you breaking away from status quo. Breaking away from what has been received as the norm. And so your mind will fight it. Everything around you will fight it. And the pressure that standing alone will bring to you will ask you whether it is worth it to stand. That's why the Bible says, haven't done all to stand. Stand. hallelujah and all over the body of christ there has been a sudden awakening pastors apostles preachers evangelists as many who are careful enough to listen to the promptings and the dealings of the spirit they are beginning to blow this alarm in zion and to sound it upon his holy mountain that there are a people that God is preparing, is raising, is training, is building. And that the fashion of this training is not one that will be traced to the dealings of God in the past. Here and there we could take extracts from the dealings of God with Abraham, Jacob, Isaac. But that there is a unique operation of the spirit that is bringing on this caliber of people. That will necessitate staying with the Holy Ghost part time. You will not miss the Holy Ghost and go back to history and expect to catch up. Because the dealings are foreign to the things that he has done before. And so God will entail that these people will subject themselves to the total leadership of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. This is why coming under the Lordship of the Spirit is only the beginning of the journey, not the end. Coming under the Lordship means that you are bringing yourself under subjection to say, Lord, you are looking for an army and you are training and preparing men and I may not have all that it takes right now, but I have a willing heart. I watched Catherine Kuhlman yesterday and I cried. I wept like a baby when I watched this dear woman of God standing in power, an epitome of yieldedness to the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And while she stood on the stage ministering the word of God, you could see the oneness, the similitude. You could see how, how intertwined, how mingled this woman had been with the Holy Ghost. That her utterances were so piercing, not because of the volume of her voice, but the depth and the realm from which she was fetching these things from. A woman and she made an interesting statement. She said, Catherine Kuman died a long time ago. She said, I remember the date and the time I died. She entered a realm in the spirit called Galatians 2.20. I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ that lives in me. He has now become my new life. And my movement is according to the impulse of the spirit. And that is going to be the characteristic of the spiritual man. Speaking to Nicodemus, Jesus said, The wind bloweth where it listeth. 
you will not be able to predict this generation of people because they have subjected themselves under the total influence of the spirit that's where we get the word baptism it's from the greek word baptizo it means to be totally immersed in a flood such that you do not see the person again you only see the object that immersed him and so we come under the influence of the holy spirit now a lot of believers have trivialized the ministry of the holy spirit but without the holy spirit there is no hope the holy spirit is the guarantee listen to me he is the guarantee that we can become that army to the expectation of god because he's the one who guides us and builds us brothers and sisters hear me this has been our journey all through koinonia it is not a move to make a name it's an attempt to cooperate with the spirit and partner with him in bringing a convergence of as many who are interested in becoming part of this move of god Who will indicate willingness to subject themselves to the dealings of the spirit over time we don't tell you lies here we don't hype you with with all kinds of nonsense the word of god comes in truth and power and i've said it again it will cost you to align with the spirit the bible says there is no man that warreth who will entangle himself with the activities of civilians and so when you come there will be a demand upon you to lay aside your ambition and pick up that of the king but then as surely as the Lord lives, there will be a reward for that sacrifice. He said, meditate on these things. Give yourself wholly to them that your profiting will appear unto all. So I'm aware that there are different kinds of people and different kinds of soils. And so I want us to start tonight by reminding ourselves that every time we appear before God in Zion, we came for business hallelujah we didn't just come to um enjoy the atmosphere or to while away two or three hours no we came based on the revelation listen i must get you to understand this if you do not you will not be able to benefit maximally are you following me now you must come with a predetermination that i am coming to continue the training it is not an endless training there is a day the sound of the trumpet will blow and at such times you will appreciate the meticulous dealings of the spirit touching issues after issues aspects after aspect flogging out a lot of things pruning different things the bible says narrow is the path that leads to life why because when you are entering that path Jesus gave us a similitude of that revelation using the eye of the needle it will it will entail you divorcing yourself with a lot of things and going alone so the path is narrow in other words the things that can pass have been predetermined you will not come with excess luggages and mindsets but wide is the way that leads to destruction and Jesus said because the rich people have a lot of things he said they may not be able to pass are you following me and so you come with your ambitions and different things and then some of us may come just to use jesus christ as an errand boy as usual because that's the move that has been taught in the body of christ and so we have a need driven congregation who only come to god as a means to an end and that end is to satisfy their belly and to bring themselves in a position where they are comforted rulers in the feast while the lord of the harvest is in the congregation he's not honored and he's not esteemed but the bible tells us in heaven that there will be a supper and in that supper the one who should be the head will actually be the head are you following me tonight and so the first challenge that the holy ghost places before us tonight is to ask you how serious are you how much are you convicted what is your passion about the things of god and about this army that god is mobilizing 
What is your concept of Christianity and church and religion? Why do you pursue God? He said, why do you call me Lord? And then I notice that there is only a receiving from you. There is no doing. You call me Lord because you came and understood by knowledge that there is a dimension of me that is able to supply your needs. You call me Lord because you understand that there is a dimension that is able to protect you and give you a wife and give you a husband. But this kind of army are not the ones who are going to tie God to a covenant. They are going to say, Lord, blessing or no blessing. They are the type who were sent to the vineyard without negotiation. They did not negotiate. When he called the people in the morning, they said, we will only work if you will pay us a denary. He said, you mean... If I don't pay you, you won't work. He said, no pay, no work. And he said, all right. You have tied a covenant with me, go. Later, he found some people sitting. And he said, do you love me enough to walk in my vineyard? They said, yes. No arrangement. And they entered the vineyard. At the end of the day, even those who came willingly, but at the 11th hour, got the same reward with those who gave God conditions. And they were angry. And he said, am I not the Lord of the harvest? What did I do that was wrong? That Christianity that gives God conditions before your allegiance must be destroyed is witchcraft coming from the pit of hell. Are you listening to me? Job said, Though he slay me, yet will I praise him. Men and women who love God with their life, with their soul, with their all. Your passion is not motivated by any loss that you have hidden, waiting to be manifested. And you say, Lord, I love you and I believe your word, but I am more passionate than any other thing. I'm not just pursuing you. Listen, it's time the church body begins to define what is motivating their pursuit to God. Are you listening to me? Because that is what will determine how far we will continue in this journey. If you are pursuing God for money or fame or husband or wife, that means the day you get married, you have no need to pursue again. Are you listening to me? And so our desire for, for God must come from an eternal plane that nothing in time will be able to quench that hunger. This becomes the platform on which authentic Christianity will spring from. To say, Lord, I love you and I'm committed. Whatever your agenda is, I am interested. I get troubled in my spirit seeing how many believers openly do not care about the agenda of God. The average church in Nigeria is only interested in fulfilling programs and holding conferences and conventions and we name all kinds of things. And we are happy. We are meticulous in planning. The ego of the, the man of God or the organizer is at stake. And every kind of artistry and accuracy comes into it. But the one whose agenda we should pursue is left. And the rulers are contending to be lords in the feast. Are you listening to me? And so spiritual growth it's not just an act of knowing scripture. It's first coming to a point where you realize that you have no life of your own. Listen to me. That's not the end. That's the beginning. This is the reason why a spiritual man is, he works so much in the presence of God. Because of all of these sacrifices that you have to subject yourself to. And tonight, what is your motivation? Why are you pursuing God? Why are you running after the things of God? Is it with a passion that will expire when certain things come into your life? Or is it genuine passion? You say, Lord, I thank you because you will give me a wife and a husband and a car and all of this. But I need you to know that I mean business with you. Are you just pursuing God because you are a student? And then you need him so that you can use him as a ladder towards academic success. And the day you cry and you graduate, you just wave him and say, Lord, there are many others who didn't backslide like me so you can concentrate on them. Lovest thou me more than this? This was a question that he asked 
Peter. Because, you know, listen, let me tell you something. Peter is, a, is an interesting figure. When Jesus was going to clean the feet of the disciples, Peter said, ah, I respect you so much. I mean, come on, how can you clean my feet? Jesus said, you do not even know what I'm doing. And Peter said, now, just bath me. Now I understand. And he was the one who ran away and betrayed Jesus to the point that he called a little girl woman because he was trying to defend himself. Hallelujah. And when the hidden agenda that was in their heart, see, eventually, over time, the agenda in their heart for pursuing Jesus began to unravel. When the mother of James and John came to meet Jesus on behalf of her two sons, meaning they were already nursing it, that Jesus will conquer Caesar and now become the king of the Roman Empire. And then at that point, the disciples will become members of the cabinet. So while they were pursuing him, they were already setting their campaign strategies on ground. And they used their mother. And the mother will say, you know I'm a woman. What will you do to my children? Because I got disturbed at the speed with which they left fishing and started following Jesus. They didn't think about it. Jesus was a celebrity. Come and they say, of course, I've always wanted. And then later on, when they found out that this journey was getting too long, they started asking questions. First among themselves. This is why you see a preacher 10 years. Diligence in, in God. And then after a while, he just says, Lord, at least heaven knows I've tried. Because the motif that was behind the establishment of that ministry is beginning to be revealed. Hallelujah. Are you following me tonight? The light of God is searching our hearts to help us. This is how we grow in the spirit. And then at a particular time, they wanted to motivate themselves in the absence of Jesus because they did not understand what governmental authority is. They did not understand that you only receive results when you are sent. Jesus went with Peter, James, and John and the remaining disciples gathered themselves around and they could not stand the ego and the embarrassment that the crowd around them, they said, look, why wait for Jesus? Can't we take initiatives on our own? And they brought somebody who was epileptic. And they did not understand the order and the trainings in the spirit and how things are done. They began to assume the position so that in the absence of Jesus, they might receive a temporary glory and console their loss before his arrival. And they were disappointed because they saw Jesus do it with ease and they thought it would happen that same way. Here and there in the Bible, you will see men who pursue Jesus Christ for different reasons. People who wanted to buy anointing so the, 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 the issue of buying anointing did not start from our generation. When they saw that by the laying on of hands, men were receiving the Holy Ghost, how much let me give you? And the church of Christ has turned into a place of gullible men and women of God, selling what they perceive to be the anointing. And we have a church that will not grow because the price for growth is unbearable. And so we rather prefer to in, to to mediate and use the prophetic and the apostolic and whatever can stand to give us a momentary succor. So if I need to find out whether it's the will of God for the job or not, I know that if I'm to follow the regular part of the spirit, I may need to wait upon the Lord in praying and fasting for three days and I say, why waste my time? When there is a donkey called a prophet and an apostle that we can ride gloriously on. And so we have a result-oriented church. Man of God, tell me what will become of my life. And we do not know him. And we are not even interested in the agenda of God. And let me tell you, friends, if God does not raise carpenters to judge the manifestation of these horns that rise up against Judah, I tell you, there will be casualty in our generation. A time will come when the new age will wipe Christianity if we do not stand. And this is why God is creating platforms like this across the nations, the remnant, who will stand and say, no, this is not the pattern of the spirit. Are you listening to me? It cannot be church as usual. 
the average Christian is taught know nothing about Jesus do you know I asked somebody one day I said who is Jesus born again spirit filled I said who is Jesus and he was shocked to find out that he did not even know what to tell me about Jesus he just said he's the savior of the world let me ask you who is Jesus no 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 don't give me a, a guesswork or what you got from your Bible who is Jesus do you know him if you don't stop telling lies on stage that he's your friend because the way we talk about him is as though we drank tea with him but then you ask him who is Jesus who is the Holy Ghost amazing that the church does not even know the Holy Ghost scholars know more about the Holy Ghost than the church they have researched as critics and come up with facts that the church is not even aware we are not interested the message about Jesus and the Holy Ghost and the kingdom and the life of God the priority and the agenda of the father that should be the pivot of the operation of every church is absent and we have replaced it with all kinds of activities making money promoting people and you see people trying to be zealous in church and all they are looking for is the name deacon or pastor and that becomes our ultimate satisfaction there needs to be a redefinition of what has been motivating us in our pursuit for God no wonder at every challenge many believers stand and give up but the Bible says if your strength fails you in the day of battle that means you did not gather strength hallelujah if I were the pastor of many churches after this service they will, they will have a board meeting about me say we don't like this kind of thing you don't come and spoil our minds read about Jesus Christ Elijah was called the troublemaker in Israel and right now you have believers who come into a building and say why didn't they put AC I'm sweating and I'm getting inconvenienced but students can stand to collect scholarship in front of guidance and counseling in the hot sun 5,000, 10,000, 15,000 you are determined to get it no matter what happens you stand on that line you maintain your position they want to push you you say I'm not going anywhere they say you are a lady you say I know I will show you I'm a lady of Jesus we, 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 so we have that spirit of determination but when it comes to the things of the spirit you hold a service after one hour 30 minutes everybody's looking at their watch and it's not like they have what, something to do afterwards because immediately after the meeting you see them greeting one another for hours so why the hurry what is motivating us what drives our pursuit for God are we passionate when Jesus came he said listen this is my meat in other words I derive satisfaction in this to do the will of the father he said I must walk the him the works of him that sent me while it is day he placed urgency on his assignment for the night comment when no man can walk again is there an urgency in your spirit to pursue God hallelujah and then the second group of people in church that we have are those who have pressed onto God to a measure and then got to that measure and based on what we want to call movements, holiness movement, word of faith movement, charismatic movement the moment you contend to the point that you enter the, the revelations of a movement you are satisfied and there is no pressure upon our spirits to contend for greater height not realizing that there are certain scrolls that have been closed that if we will contend it will be open unto us and we will open up new revelations about God and be a blessing to the body and so I ask you a question tonight under God are you really interested in the agenda of the father what are you really define what motivates you heaven wife money CGPA a job at 
what point will you rest and say Kai I've tried in this Christian journey you must define it right now I will go I will go wherever you lead me yeah. I will go I will go I will go wherever you lead me I will go can that be the anthem of your life that when people ask you and say what is your plan and goal in life you will first tell them that all that I'm about to tell you is a derivative of what God has committed unto me. I did not sit down and cook up any ambition for myself because I am bound by an oath to my Savior that I will stand and live for Him. I have brought myself willingly under the government and the sovereign rule of the King and I will not compromise. Before I continue, we are going to pray for five minutes. And that prayer, listen to me, please. Don't bow your head. We are not bowing heads here. We are going to pray audibly. Hallelujah. And the prayer is going to say, Lord, I lay down my idols and thrones I have made and all that has taken my heart. You will hear us preach this again and again. I will bow to you, to no other. We are going to repent before we continue in this service. The first repentance is to say, Lord, I'm ashamed to find out that there has been a hidden loss that has been motivating my pursuit for you. But tonight I repent. Are you listening to me? You're going to pray. Because you know I'm not lying. I pray this to God every time. I say, Lord, if there is any other reason aside from my love for you, why I pursue you, judge it, prune it, and bring me to a point where I become a dead man without you. Is that your prayer? We're going to pray. Lift up your voice and pray. Say, Lord, I lay down idols. I cannot deny that I have needs. But, Lord, I have let these needs to motivate my love for you. Come on, pray. 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 Lord, hidden in me is the ability to want fame. I cannot deny it. And while it is not bad, I have allowed it to motivate my pursuit. Lord, I've been crying for spiritual gifts because I don't want to. I've suffered inferiority complex. And so I'm looking for what will ease it away. And unfortunately, I allowed it to slip and become my motivation for you. Lift your voice and pray. Kata kata palada bakai, lebro sote berere lebos, kabate krosto pende kete balada ba, rapa kasto prosko pende keta. Pray, say Lord, I came here with a need, but Lord, in the light of Your Word, if I will be honest with myself, I'm just pursuing You. The hunger increased simply because I needed a solution, not because I loved you, not because I was passionate about your agenda. Make sure you are praying. Make sure you are praying. Make sure you are praying. I have made you too small in my eyes. We are still praying. Oh Lord. Forgive me, and I have believed 
in a light that you are unable to help me. But tonight in Koinonia, but now, oh Lord, I see my wrong. Heal my heart and show yourself strong. And in my heart and with my song, oh Lord, be mad. Come on, magnify Him above your needs. Oh Lord, be magnified, be magnified, be magnified, oh Lord, you are highly exalted, and there is nothing for God will tell in your desire for evangelism your passion for God will tell in how much you give to the house of God your desire will tell how much you pray for the house of God your desire will tell in how much you love the word of God how much you love his spirit we are still praying five minutes say Lord search my heart I'm not pretending tonight I cannot lie. There are idols in my heart. I'm a Christian. I'm born again. I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. But Lord, if you do not give me certain things after some time, I may begin to reconsider my passion. Help me tonight. I came to Koinonia for my passion to be renewed. Help me. I want to grow. Help me. Throne. I will worship him and give 
the prey to him alone. He who was a knees and knees to come, now will sing before his throne forever. Hallelujah. Say, Lord, I'm sorry. I've taken your pursuit and replaced it with many things. Say, Lord, I didn't even know when certain desires overtook a genuine passion. I was so distracted by the burdens upon me that I did not realize that I had missed out on a genuine passion. Genuine passion. Not tied to marriage. Not tied to money. Not tied to fame. Not tied to ministry. Not tied to anointing. I have been crucified with Christ. I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ. Christ. Christ in me. Christ above me. Christ before me. Christ by my side. My motivation. The beginning the end hallelujah listen to me listen God is re-examining the foundations from which our pursuit for Christ is hinged on because the Bible says if the foundation it says if the foundation be destroyed are you listening to me we are still praying I have not finished the teaching but I just sense in my spirit to sing one more song it's all about you it's all about you if you don't believe it don't sing it yet keep quiet keep quiet when you get the revelation you can join but for as many who mean it, it's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. Hey, it's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you. of standing for Jesus in the presence of your friends is because you are not yet convinced that's why you cannot share Jesus with others you are afraid of the embarrassment you are conscious of your beauty that's an idol you are conscious of it lest it will kill an opportunity to be in a relationship you cannot share Christ with your business partner with your lecturer We have replaced him with different things in our hearts so every time satan comes he comes projecting your loss first and foremost so that you cannot resist lord help us tonight hallelujah hallelujah that's why you are here. Please be seated and let's continue. Hallelujah. The Bible makes us to understand that 
before the day of the Lord. Listen to me. The spirit of Elijah. Malachi 4. Before the spirit. Before the day of the Lord. The spirit of Elijah. Will be sent forth. To prepare the way. And so before Jesus came. The spirit of Elijah was sent forth. And he began to prepare the way. How was he preparing the way? Calling the people to realize how bad they had fallen. Not because he could redeem them. Baptism at that time was not a sign of new birth. It was an indication that they would be interested in what Jesus was coming to offer. So as many who were convicted by his teaching prepared their hearts so that when the Messiah showed up, they would not resist him. For John himself did not have any power to save any man. But he said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. He was an echo and right now that same spirit of Elijah has been released upon the body of Christ to expose the works of iniquity and to bring the sons of God into righteousness and this is what is happening across every church and every denomination that truly names the name of Christ is a manifestation of this prophetic spirit that is able to receive of the things of God and communicate it fearlessly This is how your Christianity will last. So that 30 years from now, you will raise your children in the fear of the Lord. They will know no other doctrine and no other gospel. By default, they will, they will be built knowing that they love God and they have a passion for Him and Him alone. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 8. When the Holy Ghost brings you to this position, the next thing that happens is He begins to subject you through different dealings and trainings. Please listen, this is important. This is the principle, the way God prepares His army. And the way, hallelujah. Now, please look up. One is not a tragedy, but if we don't do anything about it, it will become an old wine. Hallelujah. There was a time in the body of Christ when our pursuit was for Rema. Praise God. Please listen to me. Rema. And the quality of your ministry was proportional to the depth of Rema. Insight into scripture. Hallelujah. How you could compare scripture with scripture. How you could quote whole chapters. Hallelujah. Nothing wrong in that. We gave awards to people for quoting chapters and chapters of scripture. But I needed to know that in the progression of the dealings of God. Listen. The Holy Ghost begins by exposing you to the knowledge of God. Are you listening to me? He brings you to that point where you begin to know about God through the scripture. You begin to browse through scripture and see the character of God and see his life and his nature and his principles. But can I tell you something? And this is where a lot of the church body need to upgrade their life. And anytime I say this, people get offended. I don't castigate ministers. But I am the voice that must echo the things that I hear in the spirit. Are you listening to me? I don't have a problem with any church. In fact, there is no channel I don't watch. But listen to me. Let me tell you something. When you say, I'm born again. I'm a new creation in Christ. Hallelujah. That settles it. I need you to know, listen to me. That it's not the fault of those who have brought this revelation. And it's not a lie. But that is not all there is. Are you listening to me? It's not a lie because scripture cannot be broken. However, if that is the only perspective that is seen in the body, then there is no completion. Are you following me now? And so there was a, an error and a dispensation where our fathers contended and pressed in the spirit and they came into that dimension where they began to understand that, wow, from scripture, I'm free from condemnation. Are you listening to me? 
I'm free. But the Bible says knowledge shall increase. Meaning it was not supposed to stop with that discovery. Are you listening to me? That is a sign of a healthy Christian. That there is progression into the depths of the spirit. The Bible says we see in part. And according to that part we prophesy. So when God enlarges that which you see. You begin to prophesy. But many people have camped around certain revelations. And will fight anything that looks above it. Calling it error. Are you listening to me? There are many people who have been taught in church. That there's nothing like demons. Nothing like Satan. The only demon you have is in your mind. But that's not true. Well, for those who grew up under CNN, but for those who my father's mother was a traditionalist. Are you listening to me? So, I'm not trying to guess that Satan exists. It's one thing to believe he exists. It's another thing to believe he has power over you. That is where it's faulty. Are you listening to me? But for you to just kick away and say, forget it, there's no demon anywhere. Ha, be careful. Because many of the people who are speaking will later on find out the reason why they are stunted in their life and will not make advancement. A number of them have discovered it. But their arrogance will not allow them to admit that they have seen a greater light. And so they would rather prefer to camp in what they believe to be the final revelation of the dimension of God that is given to man. When you read a lot of Kenneth Hagin's books, there are many things written in that book that you might not totally agree with right now. Is that correct? That was because during Kenneth Hagin's time, the level and the operation of the spirit and the truths that were opened there was what he received and documented. So you cannot criticize him. But at the same time, in as much as we call him a general, we cannot stop at that level. Are you listening to me? So I cannot build a camp around Kenneth Hagin and say all that he taught the thing that was moving the church was physical manifestation gold dust silver dust everybody will bring every kind of thing your watch the the silver on your watch will scratch on your hand and say see gold dust and it was not wrong listen to me but the holy ghost was studying the way we were responding to it the moment it would become an idol he sees that experience so that we will continue with the next dealings of the spirit but where you encamp around gold dust and you find your ministry around gold dust and oil and so on and so forth then there will be trouble because you will resist those who are progressing in the spirit and you will try to create many teachings to prove that they are in error not knowing that you are the one who is taunted and even when the holy ghost is ministering to you a time will come the light will be too bright you cannot explain and so you will begin to get angry because the people are not stupid the bible says it will happen to us as it happened in nephtha and zebulun he said the people in nephtha and zebulun there was a prophecy he says those who are in darkness they have seen a great light not a light a great light so it will happen a great light One characteristic of a healthy church is the ability to transit with the spirit. But when the man of God takes the place of God and makes himself the final authority in the church, he is unable to adjust because his ego will not be able to accommodate the explanations he has to give for his transition in the spirit. Transition in the spirit is not, is not a thing of embarrassment. Hallelujah. There are ministers who stop their members from reading some books because of insecurity they want to keep the members around what they believe is the full and universal counsel of god and i hear a lot of ministers teach with such arrogance and they do not know that there are other dimensions that are being opened up there are many who did not stop in yesterday's wine they kept contending and god is opening greater doors and those doors just like in 2005 when the revival came to the campus about the ministry of the Holy Spirit and what we know today to be new creation realities. It happened in 2005. And that was the time when we were coming into this knowledge. We didn't even know these things. We were coming into this knowledge. The revelation of Kenyon's teachings. The revelation of Pastor Chris's teachings. I mean, I was so blessed. I'll never forget how many times we lock ourselves. Boy, we're stepping into things in the anointing. 
those times if someone fell on the floor you will run and catch the person and take him to sick bay because you are not sure what happened but right now even in your prayer group three people even unbelievers now have acclimatized to the fact that there is a manifestation of the spirit and people can fall but we cannot stop there and so what is there what else is there to look because the mistake that many of us are making in our churches and the rest is we are encamping around an experience and will not move as see a man of God is not the one who is supposed to look at the people he's supposed to set his eyes on the cloud the moment the cloud begins to motion movement he alerts the people and said the cloud is moving begin to follow and move are you listening to me because at that time we're taught that if there is no instant manifestation in your life something was wrong with your faith and so while the Holy Ghost was trying to deal with us and taking us through processes that will bring us into maturity those teachings were were wrestling his ministry in our lives but as an act of God's grace we're able to switch and to align and to realize that in Hebrews 11 there were women who raised their dead back and women those times we could not explain what happens if a family dies hallelujah we don't know what message to tell them because we have been taught you are supposed to stand and live forever and any death is a sign of weakness and satan and so on and so forth but that was good to a measure but it is not applicable today there must need to be a growth and so we read from scripture by the holy ghost how that some people died are you listening to me without receiving the promise and he said other people raised their dead back to life he joined all the experiences and called it faith so we began to question the things that we had been believing not to scorn the people but to say look where they put full stop is supposed to be a comma there are many of you there are experiences god is giving you you have not found the confirmation yet i hope we have time wherever we can stop today and every time you go to your pastor they tell you no this kind of thing we, we don't like it you see that it is a new operation it's the manifestation of the new wine it must be discerned in an atmosphere where people have ears and they can tell you although this is strange we confirm by the spirit that this is an operation of the lord fire on many of you have stunted your spiritual growth because of different messages you have heard for instance i know people who say just pray for five minutes and pray for ten minutes you are a king speak it once <laughs> brother let me tell you the truth if that is how you want to raise your christianity there will be a bitter casualty that will teach you a lesson that may take decades for you to recover from because the bible gives us the character of a man of prayer he said elijah was a man of like passion he said he prayed earnestly are you listening to me so there is nothing wrong in receiving the teachings that you have but i'm only saying we salute the generals i respect every man of god i mentioned them by name they have been impacts to our lives until today we still listen to them forever they remain generals they have entered the hallmark of grace however there is a fresh mandate upon our generation are you listening to me and according to the measure of grace that is coming upon us we cannot use the new discoveries we are having to mock them for that will be immaturity but at the same time we will not refuse to progress because we want to pay our homage and allegiance to their doctrines are you growing tonight because if i don't balance this many of you will now stand and watch some of our fathers and hear their revelation like i see a lot of people do and they just laugh they say i've left this realm when you find yourself doing that you are a child it's not demon possession the remedy is just to grow up are you listening to me i have tapes and tapes i follow the men of god attentively because listen although eli's eye was dim it was eli who told samuel that it was the voice of God 
Eli was a type of our fathers. Although their eyes are getting dim. Not because they are backsliding. But their dispensation and the blueprint of their prophetic agenda is coming to an end. So there is a mantle transfer in the spirit. Although they may to some of you not look relevant. We approach them with discretion. One leg we are approaching the spirit and saying Holy Ghost we are trusting you. And then we are receiving direction. You see the balance. So you don't begin to use your revelation and say ah this ministry they just teach on this and that and that no we appreciate them and we salute them forever they are called generals compared to them we are only but toddlers rising up in the spirit however he told jeremiah do not be afraid of the people and say i am young for i will put my words in your mouth he said go and speak so there is an emergence of people we will be persecuted because of our age and because we are not conforming to the mold of religion. How be it there is a new wine and the one who sent us will stand to defend us. This is why you will see a lot of young people doing supernatural things for God. But then if we are careful and we are trained enough, we will realize that in the midst of all of these things, we ought to give God glory. Hallelujah. So tell your neighbor, change your full stop to a comma. Say it one more time. Change your full stop to a comma. Do not reject the operations of the Spirit. Open up yourself. Please, don't be caught up in that thing. My church, my pastor, this is what we believe. God is leading you to a book in the bookstore. It may be by an author you don't like. There's nobody I don't watch. Let your mind grow while nobody. If I cannot learn anything, at least I can learn diligence in ministry. So you must maintain a posture. Are you listening to me? So the dealings of the spirit when the holy ghost begins to walk and shed off a lot of religion from our lives follow me to romans please let's see how far we can get and then we'll pray blessed be the name of the lord can we pray in tongues for two minutes just seated go ahead and pray in tongues get used to it the bible says these signs will follow them that means when the authentic church arises by grace this will be part of the signs. Like I said, there are many of you who probably may be here and have a problem with what we are doing. Don't reject it. Just open up your heart and seek understanding. We are loving enough to explain. Rabba kata praste pataka de bele de bos Rabba soto pondo koproske ba akria kate bele de bos shaprosa Rabba tekete nembrati kata Lord let me grow Lord let me grow Lord let me grow In the name of Jesus I refuse to lag behind but take a bos ata preteke bala de bos Hallelujah The first thing that happens to you hallelujah the work of a believer is that by acknowledging that Jesus is Savior over your life and his Lordship the Bible makes us to understand that the Spirit of God comes to live in you hallelujah the Bible says he that is joined to Christ is what one spirit so there is a oneness that happens from the realm of your spirit. What is the result? Faith is imparted in you. And suddenly, you begin to gain meaning over spiritual things. The things you would have rejected. Because the spirit of God lives in you. He begins to direct you. Now watch this. You will read in your Bible. As you progress in this journey. Now you are born again. And then you begin to read in your Bible. 
Let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor say I am rich. Wonderful. Then you find another one. You have been anointed to heal the sick, to cast out devils. Wonderful. You keep noting the scripture. Hallelujah. By the time you have 30 or 40 beautiful scriptures, now you will, you will rise up based on the confidence of those scriptures. God will not fail. Hallelujah. Then your first attempt on a man on a wheelchair, he doesn't stand. And then a question begins to brew in your heart. What happened? hallelujah and then you saw that you are the head and not the tail then your result came out and you saw a carryover and you said well uh, uh, God is just something is there. you just leave the question mark there and then some of us go to our men of God and say please what meaneth these things I'm not getting it the things I see in scripture and the manifestation in my life is creating a contrast and most of us men of God all we tell God's innocent people because that is the limitation of the perspective that we see you don't have faith it's not enough stir up your faith if his faith is you walk now the people stare how do I stare and they get books and they keep reading they read different kinds of books volumes of books to the point that they can recite the books and then they don't see a noticeable improvement in their life and they come back and then we are unable to give them answers. Listen to me. The journey of a believer, the moment you give your heart to the Lord, listen, you begin to progress from knowing God to entering into an experiential walk with Him. Are you listening to me? And the experience of God with a man cannot be taught. It is unique. It is a unique dealing. Are you listening to me? Now, through those experiences, your convictions about the things you see in the world begin to crystallize and gain substance. Are you listening to me? The first area of argument is your mind. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8 verse 5. Let's look at it quickly. Romans 8 from verse 5. For they that are after the flesh do what? They do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. He said for to be carnally minded. That means to be ruled by your senses. To be ruled by your emotions. To be ruled by the things you see, the things you hear. And all of these things. The Bible says to be ruled by them. Any other thing other than Christ is death. In other words, it is an effort in futility. Hallelujah. And so your mind begins to wrestle the things of God. Because when God steps into your life, listen, He's not seeking a space. He's seeking the whole. He's not seeking a part of you. And say, okay, other things. Uh-uh. The moment He stands there, He begins to wrestle and push every other thing. Hallelujah. And that's where the willing submission of a believer begins. Listen to me. You can choose where to stop in your spiritual journey by saying, Lord, I've tried and I've come thus far. This one will not go. God will begin to touch them. One. Are you ready to listen to me? So you love God so much. And then one day God will say, empty your account. You say, Abba God, I bind, I reject that demon. He has taught something. He's bringing your finances into obedience with Christ. Then he touches your, your uncle who sent you money all the time. Say, Lord, my faith is working. Now he doesn't send you money. And what happens? Eh, my faith is still working. After two months, you really find out that the one you've been trusting was not God. Hallelujah. And then he keeps touching those things. Until he comes to a point where he is exalted king. I like a song that says, He is exalted, the king is exalted on high. You know that song? He is exalted, the king is exalted on high. Powerful song. 
so the Holy Ghost begins to wrestle your flesh what happens you are born again and although you are shouting but the issue of women you have not you have not surrendered that part so there is half Babylon half you are, you are filled with the Holy Ghost and you are preaching hallelujah but then you sit down and start remembering those days where you in the you are in the world and every lady that passes around you, if any guy stands, you say, you are covering my view, please. There is a contention. This is what the Bible is telling us. Are you following me now? Galatians chapter 5 from verse 16. It now begins to tell us, it said, now I say then walk in the spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. It said, for the flesh lusted after the spirit and the spirit after the flesh and both of them are consistently under contention. And then although you are born again, you find out that you are still involved in masturbation and certain things. You may not tell people, but these are contentions. You are praying about it. I'm showing you the progression. Then you begin to see every kind of thing. When you are praying before God and you are praying in tongues, you begin to see God brings out the state of your heart. Envy, lust, jealousy. You say, Lord, me? Me? I'm a new creation. I'm born again. But then you are seeing your old man. Cain is alive and strong. Wrestling with Abel. And because Cain is the elder brother of Abel. That flesh, it had gained dominance in your mind. Now Abel wants to come and take his place. And so there is a contention. Are you listening to me? The old man does not want to give way. The old man does not want to give way. And then Satan gives you an alternative. He said, look, there is something called the grace of God and God's mercy. Why don't you wrap yourself around that revelation and let everything go? And so you are laughing. You are saying, hallelujah. All things are working well. But you sleep in the night and people come and press you and sleep with you. You get up in the morning and it's not a problem. You will never tell anybody. You're just smiling. But these are questions you are asking. And say, what is wrong with my new creation status? And God is saying, no, it's a journey. Your mind is giving room for Satan to find expression in your life. And you are unable to lay down everything. Are you listening to me? You love God. It does not mean you are a devil. Don't let anybody condemn you, but you must not condone your state. You must do something about it. Hallelujah. You never believed you could steal. One day, in the heat of hunger, you just saw 100 naira wanting to take it. The Holy Ghost told you it's your roommate's own. You can't say you didn't hear him. And you say, Lord, the flesh contending with the spirit. And he said, does it really matter? Lord, if I ask her, she will give me. So what's the difference? God is saying, ask them. Because there is a protocol in the spirit. And you just whistle and squeeze out and carry the hundred naira. You buy bones and you eat. And God keeps quiet. It does not mean he's endorsing you. He's only encouraging you. Because a time will come, his light will shine in that area of your life. While men slept, the enemy planted tears among the wheat and the people who were with the husband man said should we begin to walk he said no in the process of pruning it you will remove some things so let them grow there is a level you get to then god will say all right about this issue of masturbation it's been two years and uh, although you have been healing the sick like can we deal with it now he said oh i'm a new creation what kind of embarrassment is this oh lord don't bring up this issue and satan begins to give you an excuse we have a church that is so dignified and we cannot open up ourselves before God because we think it's an act of weakness. Can I tell you something, friends? If you must grow and be truth, if, if, if you must grow and be mature and stand in truth, then you must open up your heart and let the Holy Spirit examine your mind and prune out everything that does not conform to Christ. Hallelujah. While that is happening, 
you will seem to be standing in one place in your journey. Other people have started ministry since they are going. They are already on air. You are there cleaning out a lot of things. Are you listening to me? Because God is saying the kind of army I need to present. And your colleague who you started laboring in the spirit together has seven branches now. And the guy looks at you and says, are you, there's an urgency in the spirit. Let's run. The harvest is wide. And he says, are you prepared? The guy says, are you joking? Meanwhile, his choir ladies cannot rest again. Because the realm of the spirit does not know whether you are apostle or prophet. And so in the middle of the teachings, what happens? Cain, you look at a beautiful lady, patience. How? And then you are preaching. And then Cain says, this side again, and you look. And you say, I have a prophetic word for you. Now, it's not your fault. You love the Lord. But you did not stay sufficient for the Holy Ghost to begin to take over your mind. So although you are prophesying, suddenly you are a prophet and you notice that Sam is the general manager of a bank. And by prophetic insight, you are giving access to his account number. Say, Sam, stand up. While you say stand up, the message that is coming from God is that you walk steadfastly. But you add command to where God stops and Cain rides out with the prophecy. Say, more so, God is telling you to drop an amount. And because of the accuracy of your delivery, you are consoled and you think it is God. Are you listening to me? And so based on it, you open a ministry. But then you find out that there are many things. Although before people you are great, in the spirit you weigh very small. Because you have refused to stay in the spirit. And then your members begin to contend for truth. And they come to a point where they begin to discern that something is wrong although these guys anointed and have the gift of the spirit we do not see the character that represents the posture of a matured man in the spirit then you begin to come up with all kinds of rules be quiet and don't challenge authority whatever we give you God will not talk to you people except he comes to us have you had teachings like that that's lack of fire in progress brothers the Bible is very explicitly clear mm, this is what you get in koinonia we want us to be strong listen I trust the Lord that the least person among us will be as strong as David we won't lie to you that's why we hold miracle services is that correct and you come we don't bug you with all these things we just pray but when it comes to building watch me there was a day now i'm careful to say this some years ago the lord told me that i should not open my bible for one week and i did not understand could that be the spirit of the lord or not but i eventually found out that it was god and god gave me the reason he said son every meeting that happens you are going like many of you are here with your notebooks. It takes something in your head to be the head. You know how Bishop Oedeko writes powerful statements. It takes something in your head to be the head. Now he's writing. You are jotting. He's speaking from a depth of revelation. You just want Rema. And he say, boy, if I preach on this in my Thursday fellowship, they will know that I'm not an ordinary person. Now you are getting these things. He's speaking from the bowels of the spirit. But it came to you just as knowledge. Rema, are you listening to me? And now you are writing it. And God told me, he said, son, you have gotten many things that can move you forward, but you are not moving forward. You are junking your head with knowledge. Close your Bible and let's begin to bring you into the experience of these revelations that you had. So I didn't say, you see, it's my unique dealing. That's why I can't write a book about it. Are you listening to me? And God began to open me up. I remember that's when God began to teach me on character. Look, let me tell you, I was walking in the anointing of the spirit in a way you cannot imagine. Praise God. And the Holy Spirit asked me, 
this is the experiential dealing now i'm teaching you how the holy ghost trains you he begins to subject you through personalized experience that only you can tell the only thing is when you share the experience with another person you will find out that although the the patterns of dealings are different according to what he wants you to become but you see that there is a similarity of objectives what he's trying to achieve praise god and the holy ghost made me to draw a diagram of the fruit of the spirit versus their manifestation in my life personalized dealings he is training me he's now giving life to the head knowledge i've had of scripture i knew it so well but the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace i knew this in right from sunday school but now there was it was now time for the reality and let me tell you something for the first time in my life my ego was torn to my knees i was shocked to find out that less than 10 percent of the fruit of the spirit was alive and working although i was anointed although we're praying for people although we had gone for crusades i said ah lord you have to help me thank god it's only me and you that is seeing this thing let's flog it out right now are you listening to me do not be embarrassed when God calls you to your knees as a general, it's not a symbol of shame. He's pruning you to lift you. So don't be embarrassed to find out that there is an issue you need to flog out in your life. Don't let religion lie to you and say it's all over. Walk out that soteria, that salvation with fear, reverence for God and with trembling because it has consequences if you leave it. Hallelujah. And when I began to do that, I saw improvement in my life. And people were happy. When I went for ministration, they said, we have a very humble servant of God. And I could imagine the Holy Spirit saying, now you did. are you not enjoying the blessings? I thought that was over. Later on again, he said, there's part two of that character dealing. And he gave me another dealing. And I found out I failed flawlessly. Although you people can see me and say, wow, great man of God. It's only me and God that knows the dealings and the levels. Are you listening to me? Many preachers will not tell you this because they stand as omniscient, omnipotent, and omni whatever. And let me tell you, if they don't take steps, they will be embarrassed. Because the realm of the spirit has no apology for what your members call you. You begin to contend for the experience. Listen, and in that contention, you begin to know the Holy Ghost. Are you listening to me? You begin to know the Holy Ghost. There are certain promptings of the Spirit that come upon me to know the kinds of anointings that are in a place. I cannot teach you. I can only explain. It's my personalized dealing. In the place of prayer, there is a way and a manner that the Holy Ghost moves upon me that I know that I've hidden something in the Spirit. And I know that this prayer has been answered. Are you listening to me? There is a way I can sense danger. If somebody wants to call me maybe to pray for the sick sometimes few minutes before that time i suddenly sense the anointing of the spirit and i sense the presence of healing angels how did i learn that the experiential dealings of the spirit this is how a believer grows one day you are praying suddenly your tongues begin to change that's your first time of encountering it and then you are saying what is happening suddenly i found out that i cannot even talk again i'm voicing but i'm not speaking these are questions the holy ghost is luring you deeper with these experiences people may reject it but you know suddenly you you are praying and you begin to sense the presence of people you know that you are not alone in that room and now your spirit is being trained it's a customized dealing this is not the type there are many of you while i'm speaking right now the first time i was speaking you were caught up in the spirit you didn't even know that it was a spiritual experience suddenly you found out that we're sharing the grace and you just smiled you went back home quietly and then you ended that dealing instead of you to begin to contend with the spirit every time you prayed you would lie down and see something that will happen exactly the next day you trivialized it but after seeing it two or three times the holy ghost is saying this is part of the tools you will need as my army and so begin to take note of it i sleep with notebooks i sleep with my bible my notebooks and my pen because at every time 
you see so you begin to walk with the spirit and you come to a point where you can look at someone and be able to help the person out of the abundance of your experiences are you listening to me the atmosphere of your spirit is alive now your mind begins to submit gradually but surely to the lordship of the spirit you begin to imbibe his word his word now the the holy spirit begins to orchestrate occasions that will make the word be living and active in your life so it's no longer just a logos here it has become true are you listening to me and then one time you will have cause and your father or your mother will not send you money and the Holy Ghost will say, I want to show you a dimension of me that is accessible. I want to train you and build you. And then he says, now depend on me. Get up and go to your friend's room. As you are stepping into your friend's room, you see him with an envelope of 5,000. He says, the Lord was leading me. And you say, so that dealing I thought was my mind was the Holy Ghost. You are growing. There is a progression. Are you listening to me? There is a progression suddenly you sit down and you sense guys something is wrong and you just tell your colleague let's pray let's pray five minutes later they call and they say someone had a ghastly motor accident and he would have died and god said note that impression i will make reference to it again your customized dealings with the spirit this is how a christian becomes a mature person because over time you begin to gather these things and the holy ghost begins to shed light and he begins to teach you so prayer becomes exciting not because you want to go and do religion you anticipate a new experience and so you are praying and wondering what next will the holy ghost do suddenly you are praying on your own the next thing you wake up and find out that you were on the floor when you fell you did not know you thought you were too praying but suddenly you found out that you had been in a vision for a long time and you say lord what what is going on in my life the dealings are you learning something please And you begin to pray then you begin to build there are times that you are sleeping and god gives you a dream and you get up and there is no direct application of that dream in your life the dream was an explosion of your mind and your spirit to acclimatize with the dealings of god so that scripture will now begin to make sense based on the things you have visualized in your dreams so you find yourself walking on water and in that dream a lot of people say, Mami Water, calm down. Don't just call everything Satan. You find yourself walking with Jesus on water in a dream. He's giving you the feeling so that when you come back and open that scripture, light that never entered you will now enter you. There are times in the dream you see yourself laying hands on the sick and you have the feeling of victory, the manifestation of faith. And every time God will preserve that memory in your mind. So that the next time you see somebody in a wheelchair, you have that same feeling. And it will, end, it will help the anointing to flow in your life. And suddenly for the first time, it will be like a dream. Are you following me tonight? The dealings of the Spirit. Bringing the knowledge of God into the experience of God for you. Then you begin to speak. You are understanding the operations of the spirit. Now when you stand to preach. Listen. You will not just talk. As if you are talking. Your convictions are getting stronger. Listen. When you experience God. That's the only condition that you can die for him. It's not by confession. Are you listening to me? Stand up sweetheart. My dear. Look at me. If I call you a man, what will you do about it? There are too many experiences in your life that have crystallized in your spirit, soul, and body that you are a lady. Is that correct? For instance, men don't wear with one except there's something wrong with them. Except there is a drastic shortage of the dealings of the spirit in their lives. Please sit down. Now, this is a lady. If you give birth to a baby, listen. Do you know if you separate a baby from any other person and you keep telling that baby, you are a boy, you are a boy, although she's a lady, she will grow up knowing and thinking and acting like a man. 
Because the first experience she receives is on account of what you are speaking to her. Are you listening to me? That's why God designed the trainings of ladies and men to be such that no man can deceive another. When the guy becomes a teenager, suddenly his voice is getting husky. Final betrayal. Nothing can deceive him that he's a lady. And then he sees mustache on his face. Uh, all these things begin to tell him, look, Mr. Man, you are not a lady. And then, what are they doing? There are memories in his mind. And then he comes to a point where he's convinced and he can die believing that he's a man. Such that when Americans are saying right now, uh, there are factors we need to look at to ascertain whether a man is a man or a woman. You say you are on your own. I know and I am persuaded that I'm a man. This is how it must be. But when you do not walk with the spirit, and this is the ministry of the fivefold, to bring us to a point where we create the roadmap. Listen, what we do is we plant and we water, but it's your dealings with God that brings increase in your life. Are you listening to me? Our job is to open up a portal and lead you and say, go. And then you begin to experience certain dimensions of God. You have been reading every time. The Bible talks about tithing. And then you have been saying, wow. If they ask you in Sunday school, you answer discipleship, you answer CRS, you answer and you do very well. And then one day God begins to tell you, all right, you've been reading this thing. When will you put it to work? Experience. Knowledge translating into experience. Now you come out here and stand and you drop the tithe. And listen to me. God will oftentimes cause the result to happen instantly so that you can see the difference. You are just dropping it and the next time it may not happen like that all the time. This is what happens to new converts. Every prayer is answered. Before they pray to be answered. And they are like, man, this Christianity, that means most Christians are lazy. Then one day you pray and it's not answered that fast. And God will say, all right, uh, I was just helping you to be encouraged. So that should, in case you don't get an answered prayer, you know you once had one. And you can follow me. Then he begins to teach you. you want to, have you seen many believers who say, I just got saved. I got filled with the Holy Spirit. I started praying for the sick immediately. And truly they were healed. Ask them after five years whether they continued. It was a motivation. God is smart. He knows how to encourage you. It was a bonus to encourage you. That look, you are seeing believers praying and fasting. You didn't pray, you didn't fast. Rema just came. And you say, if this is how it is, then I can be a preacher. And then one day you are starved of revelation. The Bible becomes a blank page from Genesis to Revelation. And then he begins to teach you the principle of receiving from the spirit. Then you begin to honor the people you have once criticized. And say, oh, I respect your fasting. You, know, you were not wasting your time. A body that becomes matured. Not just in knowledge, but in experience. That's why I like our mothers. They have gone through childbirth. They have escaped accidents. So whenever they are talking about the faithfulness of God, no matter whether they are not concerned whether I can place well or not, you just raise a song. Even if it's, Oh, come, oh, ye faithful. They just close their eyes because it's a reflection of their experience. They have come to know God. When they were giving birth to the third child, they almost died. And they called on his name and he brought salvation. So whenever they read and they say, the Lord is my strength and my light, they have an experience that can relate to that knowledge. And for them it's not waste. Mm. Are you listening to me? A woman who has five children and four died in an accident. And then, see, this is one of the reasons why when you hear a man who has experienced God, when he speaks, you will cry because he's speaking from the depth of his experience. I remember listening to Reverend Dr. Umar Ukai, lost his children after a crusade. After a crusade, his children drowned and died. He had to start a new family again. So when he reads the book of Job and Job said, though he slay me, he will say yes, because there is an experience. He has gotten that dimension of God and nobody will take it away. Have you gotten the experience for the revelations you are shouting about? For that may be the missing link.
Alléluia. Thank you, Jesus. And you come to a point where you experience certain things. Don't waste your experiences. Let the Holy Ghost use them as a training ground to make you mature. That's why the Bible says, count it all joy when you face diverse temptations, knowing that the trying of your faith will produce patience. And let patience have its full course. There is an end. It will make you become something. When you come to Koinonia, there are different kinds of worshippers. Those who have experienced what the worship people are singing. Are you following me now? That's why when who raised worship? Sam, come. If Sam, if Sam comes to stand here and sing and say, um, Lord, I give you my heart. If there is no experience to validate that revelation, you will know because there is an absence of truth have your way in me lord even if he's kneeling down you just know that there is a separation between this man and the spirit of this song an experience has not brought it into light hallelujah but if you waited 10 years before getting admission and he said lord i love you and he says lord i give you my heart you cannot explain it may not even be his voice his experience is doing something to your spirit deep is calling on to deep have your way in me that's why he can compose other versions and not care about what you are thinking because those versions relate to his experience when he, that's why you see when whenever we say sing in the spirit or express yourself to the lord some people just stand it's not your fault You've never had to look for school fees by yourself. You've never had to trust God for his faithfulness. You've never had to. You are too innocent. There is no experience. So the Bible is just like a book and you just know the memory verses. But somebody whose, whose name came out in that list has an experience about the faithfulness of God. Somebody whose mother was almost dying of childbirth and they had to come together praying day and night knows that there are demons in the village and that prayer can conquer Satan. So while you are talking English on stage, that revelation, the memory of the times he had to spend to travel, that memory is too deep for your deceits to just take him out. That becomes a platform for a healthy prayer life. So right now, your prayer life is not founded upon intimidation from your colleagues. There is an experience that has provoked you to the place of prayer. And you know you must remain there as a matter of life and death. Hallelujah. And then the Bible. Have you ever had certain experiences? And then some songs you used to listen to that don't make sense. Later, make sense. And then you just feel like listening to Don when you have criticized. His keyboard suddenly makes sense to you. He never sleeps. And that, and you begin to cry. It's an experience that is making you grow. Because out of that experience, the word of God will now come alive. Are you getting blessed, please? So, it's not enough to write. God is telling you to write all those things in your notebook. Because the day the experiences of your life will bring you into the knowledge of that aspect of God, you will appreciate what you have written. That's why when you hear some people talking, you see, you see pastors standing up. They are touched by the statement. And the members are saying, what nonsense is this? The day you start running your own church, after three years, you will stand up for every man that says what they said, that you were just watching. Because four, four weeks after you begin to pastor, the four weeks is full of crisis that you have to settle. And you say, Lord, did you call me? So next time you are seeing somebody say, God is faithful. And the man of God is relating it to his pain. His pain has become a message that helps him to understand what the Holy Spirit can do in, the, in a man's life. This is how believers become matured. And if this is not taught in the body of Christ, we are going to have a crippled people. Are you listening to me? So you get up based on these experiences. My wallet has been missing for a long time. If it was before, I called it forth, called it forth, it didn't come. I said, Lord, look, I have, I have better things to pray about. I have a, a family of believers we need to train. 
But remember one time, I gave you a story that an angel came and brought it. I prayed, I said, where is that angel? Hallelujah. The rigor of going through ATM activities right now and all the things there. But when your heart is with God, anything that lifts you cannot, it only creates more space for him to feel. So you see a believer walk and you are wondering how do people live like this? They just sat your father and he comes back dancing and you are like, daddy, are you joking? My school fees. He says, don't worry. I don't know what will happen but I remember in 1975 a similar thing happened and there was a song that I sang. Many of you don't have experiences that you can fetch. This is why testimony is important. When you give testimony, you give people a tool that they can use to fight Satan tomorrow. And then you become a matured Christian. Hallelujah. Kenneth Hagin went through all kinds of sicknesses that wanted to kill him. So when he stands ministering to people, God brings that memory. And out of that memory comes compassion. And from that compassion, the anointing will flow. You've not had any experience. That's why you say, this miracle service said, why are people always falling? The day you have their kind of disease, you will value our ministry. Hallelujah. Why must you prophesy? You are wasting our time, Jerry. The day your father looks at you and says, now you have become an adult. Fend for yourself. You will know whether you have believed God or not. And then you, you will begin to sing songs, including Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. Now it will not be special number. An experience has compelled you to appreciate that revelation of the word. To the point that whenever you read John 3.16, you can start crying on stage. People are saying, John 3, 16. It's not about the verse. It has made you to know the Holy Spirit in a certain way that you wouldn't know him. This is how the ancient were dealt with by God. Certain experiences opened certain dimensions of God. And so they knew that God was certain things and they died believing it. What do you believe about God? How have your experiences helped you to come into the knowledge the experiential knowledge of God some of the dealings of God in our lives is what has given us audacity to be able to stand and declare certain things and you watch and say how old are these people that they speak with such audacity it's not about the age it's the depth of the experiences Am I ministering to someone tonight? We are going to pray. When that happens, listen to me. You come to a point where you do not trust any other thing again aside from God. At that point, he becomes king of kings and lord of lords. Then you will now appreciate my song. King of my life, you are my all. Don't sing it. And I live for you alone. I wrote that song on Valentine's Day. And I lay my life for you. Listen. My heart is yours. Is it making sense to you now? My mind is yours. My will is yours. You're the king of my life. So when the worship team raises, you say, ah, this song is not sweet. You, you enter an experience that will make that bitter water become sweet. And then every day you hear it, you say, ah, you may not know the song. You just say, my heart. And you keep saying my heart and you are crying and it's ministering to you and you are shedding tears and you are, you are shedding tears. When the victory comes, you take note of that song. Have you seen your, your parents noted certain songs? It doesn't make sense to you why they like it. They sang it the day you will be delivered. You almost died. Your father was almost dying of hypertension around the labor room. And that song ministered to him. And every time you sing it, he remembers you and the destiny of God in your life.
Many of you look at my name and say, my name is not Abba. Why would they name me Joy? And then they will tell you the experience that led to that name. That they waited 10 years with no child. And then you came and they rejoiced. And then they called you Joy. Say, it doesn't matter. Then three years, you didn't get admission. The day you get, you say, my name is Joy. The revelation has brought you to a position where you begin to appreciate certain things. Believers, we need to grow. This is where God is taking us. When that happens, the consummation of all things is that your body begins to experience that soteria. And then you can allow your body to be a channel through which the life and the power of God can flow to others. Your vocal cords become instruments through which you will communicate his life and power to others. At that point you become useful. But can I tell you something? This is the journey. Stop looking for power and manifestation. What you should be searching for right now is God. Say Lord give me an experience. An experience beyond Christianity an experience an experience Lord I desire an experience with you I've had knowledge I've had so many things so when you hear Michael Smith say it's all about you you'll be wondering and say ah, all about him but Lord I've given you all and the Bible says I've been bought with a price please come two people very quickly so that we I need to, no, no, sit down, Pastor Fami. I promise you can come. Come, stand here, stand here. Watch this. In my example, this guy is a thief. This guy is a wrong occupant. Watch this. If this is my handkerchief, and Ken comes to quickly steal it, the moment he hears this, my footsteps, what will he do? He will run away because he's a what? Thief. But if somebody comes and meets promise and say promise give me 10 naira i will give you this handkerchief and promise gives him 10 naira and he gave him the handkerchief is there a contract there is there a covenant there if he sees me coming will he refuse because you see the realm of the spirit is a legal realm are you getting what i'm saying now so our forefathers went to idols and they said protect our wives make the plants bring crops for us in response we will hold festivals every time in response we will donate children to you in response they, it was not their fault they did it because christianity had not come to nigeria now watch this when samuel ajayi crowder and many other christians came they brought the gospel of salvation, not the mysteries of the kingdom. Are you getting me? They brought the gospel and we salute them. But that was not enough. The understanding of the mysteries of the kingdom that would bring liberty was not taught. So even they themselves died. I traveled to, we were in Gombe. One time Gombe State. And we're going to Yerima's village. To go and greet his family and on our way there there was a rock like a cap and they were telling us a story there that the people used to live there that that rock used to open physically there was an invocation that would be made on it and it would open and people would enter inside the rock and hide during times of war and this is what they said the last person to enter you are the one that is donated to that rock the last person to come out you are also donated to the rock are we together now and that rock has been faithful has been what the same way our forefathers had bumper harvest even where there was no rain mysteriously the crops grew these spirits kept their part of the contract all of a sudden some missionaries just found themselves into the village and they said we brought good news and they died in three days the spirit killed them immediately and said you are joking good news of what and then a few people received it and then when they received it 
they convinced themselves that because they are born again the territory was now changed i watched a documentary brothers and sisters in fiji island fiji island is an island small island but they love god now something happened there were missionaries who came to that place and they so beat the missionaries and oppressed them before the missionaries died they cursed the land they cursed the land and the people and they died and the people thought it did not matter one by one the fish in the river disappeared mysteriously when hunger hit the people from the government down they said something is wrong and god began to reveal to the church around there that look there are there are apostolic activities that must happen in this land if the territory must be cleansed this is what they did they began to pray and then supernaturally they found the grandchildren of the missionaries listen to me they brought the grandchildren of the missionaries to the city they loved them and the children blessed the land and said we release you from the cause of our fathers it's, it's a documentary in less than one week they saw fish crops started growing Fiji Island changed at once. There are so many families that are seated. Part of the terms of the contract is that if you don't bow down to that idol, you will never build a house. You will never marry. Contract sealed. Now you came that you are born again and you are moving around. 35, 37, no marriage. The other one too is coming. When you meet pastors, they say, no problem. Are you not born again? Just believe. Marriage is going the ones that get married no children mysteriously you are seeing the same patterns happen because covenants are powerful that was the very same principle jesus used to redeem man covenants covenants are you getting what i'm saying now covenants are powerful until they are broken the spirits the custodian of those covenants are authorized to still begin to execute the terms on the of the covenant even on the victims please believe what i'm saying i prayed for too many people i've ministered to too many people i'm not telling you stories i'm telling you what i was free from number two ignorance ignorance authorizes demon spirits to buffet people psalm 82 verse 5 bless you guys thank you they know not neither will they understand they crop in darkness confusion ignorance and as a result the earth is out of course but have i not said verse 6 here god and all of you are children of the most high he said but you shall die like men men and fall like one of these princes the bible says my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge ignorance ignorance of the mysteries of the kingdom ignorance of the principles of the kingdom ignorance of the keys to true liberty in the spirit number three disobedience personal disobedience deuteronomy when you read i think chapter 28 or so it shall come to pass it says thou shalt diligently hearken to these things to do and observe all that i command you this day that you shall be exalted above all nations and the blessing shall come upon you and overtake you is tied to your obedience the bible says having the readiness to judge every disobedience when your obedience is perfected when it is complete disobedience authorizes the devil to buffet our lives don't let anybody lie to you that when you disobey god nothing happens no it's not about god doing it it's about the laws in the spirit they will not change they didn't start with the old testament those laws predate our dispensation. Are we together now? So tonight, I want you to look at your life very carefully. Especially for those of us who have come. Have you not seen traces of the influence of darkness in one area or the other? That does not mean you are not born again. That does not mean you are not serious with God. But it's time tonight on behalf of you and your family members 
to rise up and say no way I come by the blood I come to challenge these things there are many of us who have never received a testimony of any good thing that anybody has done in your life somebody buys a recharge card to give you it disappears physically that's that's the extent to which this thing is working against you have you seen people like that a guy tells a lady i love you car will jam him two hours later just for trying to verbalize that i'm considering marrying you car jams him his friend now comes and says Tor, since my friend has come me too i love you something happens let me tell you the meaning of that it puts a stigma on you and your family are you getting me now and they say these people there is death have you not seen lands that people bought land to build house why do you think we dedicate properties why do you think we pour oil on land i know a man who bought a property and went there to stroll in the night and received a slap in the in the in the land true true story because the spirit there does not care whether you paid for it gave him a slap when listen when i was in secondary school we were in a temporal site before they moved us to the, pam the permanent site that temporal site used to be a hospital are you getting the point where the place that was like the mortuary was part of the place that was converted to our kitchen i tell you many students had encounters with strange beings you are entering to ease yourself and you will just hear sounds sounds that can give you a headache for a long time i remember our school getting ultimate power so that we we'll watch as their own strategy to deliver us from this this nonsense many students were initiated into occultism because of that but tonight we come in the name of the lord the captain of the army that this situation in your life must end I sat back there fighting tears when all the people were sharing their testimonies a testimony is simply what happens when the Holy Spirit becomes the only influence in a man's life any other spirit must create problems tonight daddy mommy sisters and brothers there is need to deal with certain things in our lives I saw poverty in my family as if we offended God coming from a pastor's family didn't change my family background your name can be Solomon you will remain poor until what needs to be addressed That's why I told you tonight will be a night of massive deliverance. Listen, as we begin to pray, many of you who are sick will all of a sudden turn and find out that the sickness has gone. Really, when you understand this, you will know what a miracle is. A miracle is what happens when the spirit that is causing that ailment departs. This is what Jesus did to the woman who was bound. He looked at her in the spirit and he saw that a spirit had tied her for 18 years. And he said, woman, thou art loose lose he didn't say thou art healed he said thou art loose the moment the spirit left he laid hands on her and straightened the physical body and there she went remember that madman at gathering that was an evangelist in a cave tearing himself into pieces the moment the spirit heard that jesus was coming they were waiting for him at the other side hallelujah mighty on your throne mighty on your throne i'll never forget one time i was praying praying seriously i was in the spirit and i had a vision i saw that there is a tree that is close to where i stay and i didn't see that tree again i just saw a great beast like like a like a being the tail was a snake the eyes were big like human head imagine this head now like an eye two of them one here one here and the spirit was looking at me with fierce anger and all he told me is so you think you can bring God's people into prosperity and then it left that was it mighty on your throne 
almighty on your throne. That's the reason why every time Satan wants to destroy you, the devil will now cause you to disrespect that person. So your mother may be an anointed woman and you will fight and tear and say over my dead body for you to pray with me. And Satan will say, Amen. Let's go. And then the oppression starts because your pride and your arrogance will not allow you to go to the person and say, help me. Tonight we are going to cry to the King of Kings. I don't know if you came for this miracle service, especially for those who are family people here. You should never go back the same. You see the results of people, 4.8, 5 points, they have always had that ability. Even when they were getting one point. It's a spirit that makes that happen. Don't let anyone fool you. You are not so daft. Human beings were created intelligent. When you enter an exam hall. And you write nonsense. And come out with zero. And smile. And say it's just because I didn't read well. Is that really true? How many of you watch film twice to explain it? You sit down and watch a three-hour film once and you can come out and recite that film completely with the hair of the actor's wife. And that was, you didn't read for it, yet you spent six months or five months reading for one course and then at the end of it, you come and fail it and get nonsense and you keep convincing yourself, it's just that I didn't get it. It is the reason why you can read a novel of 1,000 pages, but a lifetime, you can't read half of the Bible because there is a spirit stopping you. If this was a novel, some of us would say, take this, I will bring it for you next week, Friday, and you will exhaust it. But from the day you were born, the day you were born, till today, you have not read up to one third of the Bible. One time you cried and prayed and fasted and started and three days later, Remember when you carried your devotional and did balance brought forward. You started reading from two weeks back as a sign of repentance. After you read it, you now threw it away. Because you cannot help yourself in the flesh. It takes the anointing of the spirit. That's why he sends carpenters. That's why he puts miracle services like this. So that you can come under the influence of God's power. How about genotype issues? SS. You get up and find out you are SS or AS. Do you know the Bible never mentions the issue of SS or AS? Are you aware of that? That thing was a technology that was fabricated by Satan. To stop people from getting married. You see a beautiful lady. Who has a prophet in her womb to come. And then one spirit just brings one, one demonic report called SS. And they say sorry we can't join you. Because you are going to kill your children. For that devil is a liar in this place tonight. I'm challenging you because when we rise, we are going to pray. The miracles will start as we pray. You've got to be angry with yourself. And say, no, enough is enough. Enough is enough. We are come to Mount Zion. Where there is an innumerable company of angels. Where there is the blood of sprinkling. The blood of sprinkling. That speaketh better things than any covenant. That speaketh better things than any ordinance. The good news is that Jesus has paid the price. Our job is to enforce that victory. Are you getting my point? We enforce that victory by engaging the mysteries of the kingdom that bring for liberty we are going to pray that that power that has tied our destinies down it must let us go same power that conquered the grave lives in me lives in me your love that rescue the earth lives in me lives in me same power that conquered the grave lives in me lives in me yeah. your love that rescue the earth lives in me 
two more times with faith in your heart. Same power that conquered the grave lives in me. Lives in me. Your love that rescued the earth lives in me. Lives in me. Jump up on your feet and sing it one more time. Same power. Conquer the grave lives in me, lives in me. Your love that rescued the earth lives in me, lives in me. One more time with faith in your spirit. Say, power that conquer the grave. Your love that rescued the earth is in me. Is in me. Listen, deliverance, therefore, is a separation, is the spiritual process that experientially brings the separation between you and the forces and influences, the spirits that attempt to influence your life. The legal separation. Brothers and sisters, when that happens to you, then you will see gates open by themselves. When that happens to you, you will see realms of favor. All these things people pray on. You must challenge those spirits. You must challenge those spirits on behalf of yourself and your family. And God is ready for us tonight, I tell you. God is ready for us tonight. Lift your voice in one minute and bless him for this word. The body without a spirit is dead. The body without a spirit is dead. Now I realize that there is a spiritual component to the challenges in my life. Lift your voice and thank him for this revelation. Lord, I now realize that there is a spirit component to the failure in my family there is a spirit component to the retrogression in my life there is a spirit component to my lack of admission there is a spirit component to my lack of marriage there is a spirit component to the poverty in my family Are you praying tonight? Let a dissatisfaction rise from you. Oh, come on, tonight is your night of liberty. Same power that conquered the grave lives in me. Lives in me. Your love that rescued the earth lives in me. Lives in me. Just the voices. Sing it from your heart. Same power. That conquer the grave lives in me, lives in me. The power that can challenge any altar, the power that can challenge any force of witchcraft, any generational cause. One more time, sing it. That conquer the grave lives in me, lives in me. Rescued the earth lives in me, lives in me. Same power, same power that conquered the grave lives in me, lives in me. Your love, your love, same your love.
Hallelujah. Lift up your voice right now and mention everything you know that is a tragic event in your life and challenge it. Say it must stop tonight. Lift your voice. Oh, come on, Koinonia. You should be praying. Mandalatata Challenge the spirit Challenge the spirit Behind failures Challenge the spirit Behind marital delays Challenge the spirit Challenge the spirit of death from your family. Challenge the spirit of death. Challenge the spirit. Challenge the spirit. He must let you go tonight. He must let you go tonight. Those outside, I hope you are praying. This is your destiny tonight. The spirit, the body without a spirit is dead. Hallelujah. 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 Look up, please. Your failure without the spirit that sponsors it is dead. Barrenness without the spirit that sponsors it is dead. Are you getting what I'm saying? The key to liberty is to evict the spirit that initiates that thing. For a body without a spirit is dead. Any cause without a spirit backing it is dead. It's null and voice. Any pronouncement, any enchantment without a spirit is dead. Therefore, I want you to lift your voice. And I want you to declare forget about the problems lift your voice and speak as a believer that you are to every spirit address it behold i give you power over snakes scorpions pray Oh yes, he must leave you tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. There are spirits that will never allow you walk in the anointing. They will never let your eyes open to see visions. And even when it opens, they will, they will bring you into error. So that everything you see meets leads you into trouble. I'd like you to lift your voice again. Just do what I'm asking you to do. From the realm of the heavens, challenge powers, challenge forces over your finances. Ina Tonia Tabosa, Bretta, Basso Toliata, Bretta, 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 Bretta,
Oh, it must change. It must change. It must change. It must change tonight. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. My goodness. It's a strong anointing in this place. Oh, it must let you go tonight. Who says that breakthrough will not come? Who says that marriage will not come? Who says that cancer cannot die? Who says that HIV cannot live? Maka kapata. Lift your hands to the heavens. Lift your hands. My goodness. All I see in this room and outside is fire. That's all I see. Fire. You will see deliverance tonight like you have never seen. This one is the one that will bring your miracle. Listen. As this prayer goes on, miracles will start immediately. Many of you will start getting reports from your body. Many of you will be open to visions. Right now, lift your hands. Hallelujah. My goodness, there is such a heavy unction on me. It's for deliverance tonight. It must give way for you to move forward. At the count of three, hear me. Listen. I want you to shout Jesus at the top of your voice. At the top of your voice. It's a prophetic instruction. As you shout it, fire. Some of you visions, your eyes will be open in the spirit. You will see covens catching fire. Mata Labata. Father, you told me tonight is a night of deliverance. There are families under bondage. There are businesses under bondage. Enough is enough. Let your fire bring deliverance. Are you ready now? At the count of three, may heaven invade this place. One, two, three. Second, second, second. I command covens. I command altars. I command spirits. Kaporotoshe. Bring them out. Fire! 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost is showing me a vision. We are going to shout it again. Please don't do it here. I see many people vomiting poison. Physical poison. As you shout, physically, it will come out. Lift your voice. Bata, bata. Shaka, ta, ta, ta. Mare, tende, tepa. Father, anything that has been planted in the body of anyone right now, as you shout Jesus, we are victim. One, two, three. protos, mokotos, lekotos, It must let you go. It must let you go. You are coming out of their lives. You are coming out of their lives. You are coming out of their lives.
my goodness fire is burning in this place fire is burning in this place fire is burning in this place the devil must let you go the devil must let you go the devil must let you go the Lord is giving me a word right now there are ladies here there is a spirit that comes to you in the night to oppress you to sleep with you right now Lord where are they let that fire let that fire bring deliverance right now right now right now right now every spirit husband every manifestation every spirit wife every devil that has leads to you it leaves you now now right now he must leave you now hallelujah the Lord is showing me a lady you see physical snakes where is that lady physically physically it appears to you physically the lady is right here please come out I don't know who that lady is physical snake it appears to you you see it let me tell you something after this miracle service you will see advancement in your life in a way that will surprise you that's when you will know that satan is not as powerful as he looks hallelujah lift your voice and pray any covenant that ties me to anything of the fathers have been called out of every tribe every tongue i am i'm a new creation no longer connected to ancestry lift your voice and pray every altar that connects me to my fathers every witchcraft that attempts to connect me no i'm in christ I'm in Christ. I'm in Christ. I'm in Christ. Hallelujah. 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 We we'll pray for the sick, but there are miracles happening right now. When I call your, your case, just check it and come out here right now. I'm seeing, I'm seeing a lady. Please check it. There's like a growth right here at the side of your breast. Check it right now. You'll find out that it's gone. Check it right now. Right now. And make your way to the front. I see someone having severe pain. Your tie right under here your tie there is severe pain severe pain the lord is healing that person right now please check yourself and make your way to the front right now check yourself make your way to the front i'm seeing two ladies you came here with heaviness there is heaviness on your chest it's just like something heavy god is healing people can you appreciate jesus hallelujah There are miracles happening. Make your way to the front now. We'll give you room to testify. Stand here. All the people that are coming out for miracles, just stand here. Right now, there are miracles that are happening. I see someone, like your nose. It's like there is an irritation in your nose. While we were praying, you felt like there was fire on it. And now it's lifted. Now it's lifted completely. It's gone right now. Right now. Right now. I'm seeing someone severe peptic ulcer it hooks you hooks you very seriously as we started praying it just disappeared who is that make your way to the front right now right now right now i see a lady you hear a voice telling you you will die 
not a vision a physical voice physical voice it tells you you will die a physical voice physical voice it speaks to you physically can you help me all the please if i don't call anybody's case i'm going to pray for the sick i'm calling miracles cases that have happened help me um aaron would you help me just examine these people and then we'll take a few testimonies god is giving people miracles miracles right now miracles right now miracles are happening right now i'm seeing somebody listen there is a growth you came here with the growth at the back of your neck check it now it has disappeared check it now now and make your way to the front put your hand there and check it you will find out that that growth is gone completely i'm seeing two holes two holes of a left teeth being healed right now check it you won't find the hole again two holes two holes of your teeth check it right now and make your way to the front my goodness god is doing miracles in this place there are miracles that are happening miracles that are happening i saw this same case in kaduna this morning now i'm seeing four people four people there is one guy and three ladies you have pile pile for one of the ladies when you go to ease yourself it's as if you are giving birth blood comes out go and check yourself now you find out that that pile is gone gone back to the devil go and check it please please we are not playing games don't sit back confirm your miracle and seal it i know there is a guy i saw a guy pile severe pile hallelujah the lord is showing me a lady tears just start coming out of your eyes without any you are not crying but it just starts coming out it's very embarrassing it starts coming out right now the lord is healing you wherever you are confirm it and make your way to the front right now confirm it and make your, your way to the front right now right now confirm it and make your way to the front we'll give all of them room to testify god is healing people right now i'm seeing someone with this finger look at me this finger this very finger that's what the lord is showing me there is a miracle happening on that finger this very one i don't know if it broke or something happened to it but there is a miracle happening to that finger right now right now i'm hearing a name gabriel 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 who is gabriel 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 the lord is bringing a a miracle for gabriel gabriel i've been fighting this name but let me bring it out i'm hearing a name asabe i don't know if it's a woman or somebody in a family asabe asabe i'm hearing that name who is asabe please confirm make sure you confirm it let's not huh you are asabe uh but i'm seeing another person again no oh. eh? this you are please stand here miracles everywhere come tell us very quickly come come please help us give aaron let's let's coordinate them okay come sir let's just listen to this give them the mic lawrence just testify tell us look at the crowd straight to the point what happened to you what is the miracle praise the lord i am the girl whom the man of god prophesied i have an irritation in my nose since 2012 2012 yes. and now what happened every day once i put my hand i i always notice blood coming out but now i felt something drop out of my nose that devil leaves you forever in the name of jesus christ free give jesus praise god is doing miracles here all kinds of miracles are happening in this place please the next people let's have them come very quickly just turn and let's testify don't look at me look at the crowd praise the lord hallelujah i i have this bonus while we are patient. talking there is a lady who will come strongly under the anointing outside please pick that lady and bring her 
as we are talking the power of god is in fact two ladies two ladies outside mightily by the anointing please pick them and bring them yes ma hallelujah on my left thigh i have this burning sensation i don't even know what cause but i know that once it starts it burns me as if i'm sitting on fire okay but now it's gone and since last hearing this voice saying i'll die even when i was coming last week i had this fear that i was going to but right now it's gone. completely gone give jesus praise god bless you yes please check yourself if you see a miracle you can come out we are going to pray for the sick but we want to take testimonies we'll give you an opportunity to tell us what god is doing mama please stand up please don't let mama sit down for god's sake give her a chair mama should not be kneeling down praise the yes lord. please sometimes i normally feel pains in my chest sometimes i normally feel pains in my chest but now i feel very breathe in and out breathe in and out any pain any pain is there any pain is there any pain give jesus praise yes please praise god while he was preaching i was having peptic ulcer so peptic ulcer out, but while we start praying it left me and there's I'm one more outside go and carry her Jesus. it left me immediately now i'm not feeling it again. no pain again give jesus praise yes ma'am praise, praise the lord i used to have this heavy pain on my chest since 2002 but um when I went to see the doctor, they said it was pneumonia. Sometimes I can't breathe. Pneumonia. The pastor said I should sh we should shout Jesus. I can't breathe. I can't shout too much. But the moment I shout Jesus, I fell on the floor. Everything just left you. No pain again. Praise the Let Lord. Let me pray for you. It never returns to you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. I'm seeing someone with an eye problem. I don't know what the eye problem is, but it's living right now. Please confirm yourself. Eye problem. Check it. Check it. We are not playing games, please. Check it. Check it. Eye problems. I'm seeing a miracle happening right now. Eye problem. Confirm it and come out right now. I'm seeing this at least 10 people with this case. At least 10, like the lower abdominal region right here. You've been having se severe pain. It's like something pulls you there. Check it right now. You find out that you receive a miracle. At least 10 people. Please make your way to the front at least 10 people check it right now god is doing a miracle don't sit back inside and outside lower abdominal region lower abdominal region that miracle is happening right now right now right now at least 10 people 10 people with that pain as soon as you check it make your way to the front celebrate jesus god is healing them they are coming they are coming all of you you can come and stand here the moment you receive a miracle please stand here they'll confirm you at least 10 ladies right at this lower abdominal region hallelujah i'm seeing a gentleman you came here with a throat condition in fact um let me just describe to you they are telling you they want to take you somewhere to cut the throat it's like there is an elongation some i'm seeing them saying they want to use is it knife or something and cut something that uh, an elongation who is that person the lord is healing you right now right now you can't swallow things you always feel like it's like bone but it's like there is something on your throat almost perpetually right now check it check it check it completely the power of god is coming upon you there is a lady god is healing your mother but the power of God will come upon you as a witness to that. Lord, where is that lady right now? Where is that lady? Identify her, oh God, by the power of God. Right now. Right now. Right now. Please bring the lady out. God is healing her mother right at home. And God is using what is happening as, as a point of contact. As a point of contact. I'm still seeing breast lump disappearing like a lump. I'm seeing one on the left, left side. Please check it, check it. When you receive a miracle, testimony is one way to seal it and keep it. The Lord is showing me three ladies your hair falls every time you go to comb your hair you literally comb your hair and bring out a copious amount of your hair 
that is removing this thing is a serious thing you have used medication and it has not stopped a miracle is coming to those people right now a miracle is coming to those people yes let's take the testimony quickly please loud and straight to the point Praise the Lord. help I us sound please can you help us with this mic i used to have this pen down my stomach here but now i'm not feeling completely okay. gone yes are you sure yes. how long has it been Believe come on koinonia let's not get too used to miracles in this place <laughs> hallelujah it never returns to you in the name of jesus christ the next person please my goodness look at what god is doing god is giving people miracles go ahead my name is like i'm pregnant it's come like pain as in i'm pregnant and i've been complaining that for months but today when the prayer was going on i felt relief and my stomach in fact down. as she was talking hold on the lord opened my eyes there is a lady your stomach is already swelling this is almost is even beginning to embarrass you it's not just like a stomach protruding you are feeling it very hard and stiff um, it's, you are afraid because it's looking like it's a situation of a fibroid. Please check it right now. God is giving you a miracle. God is giving you a miracle. God bless you. Bless you quickly. When they say we should shout, praise the Lord. So I now shout. The stomach used to pay me even before I come to Zaria, but I can't feel it again. Completely gone. Yes. Give Jesus praise. It never returns again. Yes, please. Praise the Lord. Um, recently, I started having this eye pain. When I'm walking, doing other things, one of the eyes get blank and I don't see again. But now, after the prayers, I feel one sharp pain and I used to have this abdominal pain almost all the time. But it just left me immediately. Give Jesus praise. It never returns to you again. In the name of Jesus. Glory be to Jesus Christ. This abdominal pain starts two days ago. So, I came here and when I was praying, I just received total deliverance and complete deliverance please help them so that they don't fall on, on praise the lord the abdominal pain normally comes and go and when i was outside i was still feeling my stomach hooking such that i could not stand well i was bending and then when the man of god spoke i got up and stretched and to the glory completely of the lord, no pain again come on give jesus praise give jesus praise the lord mine is more of um creativity ideas that God is to give me every day when I'm in my quiet time and it's it happens that every time I try to push further I realize that there are a lot of setbacks distractions and uh, confusions that comes my way and right now, but what right happened? now when at the mention of the name Jesus I felt my body on fire I can't really understand what was going on. On fire, a restoration yes, of that creativity yes, comes, yes, comes to you yes, in the sir. name of the Lord Jesus amen. Christ. Amen and amen. God bless you. Praise the Lord. I came here with a severe eye eating. At the shout of Jesus, everything just wiped out. Believe me, that name works. Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. I have a medical report from Shika concerning pain. In pain joint. you went to the hospital yeah what did they say is wrong with you they, did, they couldn't see the anything they couldn't see anything yeah okay and when you were praying you prophesied that there is a uh, 10 people here that that god is working on yes. their system and, and now what has happened to you the pain is gone. the pain is completely even gone give jesus praise even the medical report is in my room the medical report is in your room yeah. you go and check yourself and you find out all of you that were under the anointing when you get up don't just go back to your seat check you will find out that all kinds of things have happened you are not just falling for nothing praise the lord praise the, pra praise the lord i'm trusting god for a new set of dentition my teeth are just go ahead <laughs> the power of god is on her Oh, Father, complete what you have started in the name of Jesus. I stretch my hands towards you in the name of Jesus. Because your faith can receive it, let it have it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. God bless you. Next person, please. Praise the Lord. After we take this trip, people, and, um, it's okay. Um, there is this pain that I usually used to have by, um, from under my armpit to the left side of my breast. Okay. So when um, you mentioned the case, I was not too sure if I was the one. But later, you specify by saying the, your left side of your breast. I notice 
like swelling up and sometimes i very i feel like very a swelling there yeah. yeah and I now feel, have you checked it yes I, is there I, anything I there completely okay, gone come on yeah. give jesus praise it never returns again in the name of jesus christ praise the lord i want to thank god for the spirit of fear as in i do get scared a lot but i now i'm free in the, name the spirit of, of fear come it never returns to you again by the power of the Holy Ghost. You are free from the spirit of fear in Jesus' name. Yes, Praise please. the Lord. I want, to, I want to thank God for healing me from the lower abdomen. I used to have this pain right from child. When, when, I, was, when I was young, I used to have this pain. But when you were praying and you asked us to shout Jesus, I, I feel relieved. I just Completely. want to thank God. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God bless you, my dear. Praise God. Praise the name of the Lord. I don't know. Sometimes second of August, this very month, this is my middle finger. Help her. Fire is landing on people. I started having pain around this region, affecting this finger mostly. I can barely use it, but since he prayed during the miracle session, I got here. I announced. I saw I've been that shaking, a baby, I've a been finger. shaking it. I've been shaking it and no I'm pain now. Come on, no give pain. Jesus praise, everybody. Where are the two ladies, Asabe, that I called? I called some two ladies, Asabe. The Lord is changing the story of your family. This Mama is Asabe. Huh? Please, you push not stress, Mama. If she's if she's out because she's sick, Mama Kizona Zah make her do Please, you push not stress this old woman. If she should, even when she's coming out, carry her with the chair and just keep her here. We'll pray for her. Please, the Lord is, is wiping the tears in your family. You believe that when a word comes like this, it comes to give you liberty. Hold my hands, Father, in the name of Jesus. I end this oppression in this family right now. It goes forever in the name of Jesus. Who has an elder brother? Who has an elder brother? Yes. Do, you, do you have an elder brother? Yes. What is he doing? He's a carpenter. He's a carpenter. Yes. The person I'm, I'm talking about didn't go to school, though. Is your brother? Yes. Where is he? He's in the village. He's in the village. God is going to lift him. What is this thing that I'm seeing them laughing at him and they are saying it? It's not his fault that he didn't go to school. Even you, it's by the grace of God that you are here. It's not like maybe it's that your, your people are sponsoring you and all of that. It's the favor of God. Yes. But God, as a sign, go and tell him, call him after Koinonia that the Lord said he's going to connect him to a rich man. He should be faithful to that man. Amen. That man will bless him. Amen. Father, let there be breakthrough in this family. In the name of Jesus. Asabe? Gabriel. Oh, your name is Gabriel. Your name too is Gabriel, sir. Who is Titi Lyo? Titi Lyo. I'm hearing a name, Titi Lyo. Please let's save time. Our time is gone. Um, we still have to pray for the sick. Titi Lyo. I'm hearing the name Titi Lyo. Titi Lyo. Who is working here, sir? You're, you're working. You're both working. Okay. I'm going to pray for you because I'm seeing the Lord bringing. The Lord is. Sir. It won't be too long. You are leaving Gusau. We spoke, at least we spoke. That one is not word of knowledge. We, we spoke about it, but it won't be too long. The Lord is lifting you to another place. Go and write it down. This will happen to you. It won't be too long. Write it down. You will come back and testify before them. It's not a disadvantage. It's something that will bless you in no small way because you have come with your heart open in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, I lay my hands, I pray right now. That you bring your word to pass concerning his life in the name of the lord jesus christ i hear breakthrough for you sir this is what i hear the lord is saying i should announce breakthrough to you father i hold his hands and i announce breakthrough in jesus name praise the lord your mother is sick what's wrong with her she has been bleeding for the past one year bleeding you, you can see the kind of demonic thing we are talking about here. Huh? Your mother bleeding for one year non-stop. How about that? And you fell under the anointing? No, sir. You, you are just standing to agree yes, for her. Okay, sir. no problem. We have a session for that. But since you came out, hold my hands. 
hold my hands look at me do you believe god will touch your mother where is she where is home taraba taraba state yes, sir. you are from taraba yes, sir. lord show mama mercy right now in the name of jesus christ as he touches you he touches her please don't just come out at will ah, you are related to her your sister is titi Lyon. yes sir. where is she she's in Cardinal. what's she doing she's schooling at Cardinal. she's schooling okay let's pray for her father in the name of jesus christ what are you doing you i'm a student sir where kpss Eh? Knowledge is power. Secondary school. Okay, knowledge is power. Yes, sir. Your sister is where? Kaduna. Kaduna. Yes, sir. Tell her, is she married? No, sir. Tell her marriage is coming for her. Are you hearing me? You believe it? Because she has been praying about this. Your mother, where's your mother? Your mother has been joining her to pray. Yes, your sir. mother even went to a man of God and they prayed about yes. this thing. Is that true? Your mother went to a man of God to pray. Go and tell her that the Lord is saying marriage comes for her. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns. Hallelujah. Now, please, this is the time to minister specially to sick people. You know the nature of our programs here. We will need a lot of time. So, if you are not sick, if you are escorting somebody, please just bring the person and go back. And once they pray for you, don't wait for another prayer. One touch is okay. Some of you, when they pray for you, you refuse. You still stand back. Please. Once they pray for you, just check yourself and go back. Praise the Lord. And then, don't keep going back and coming out and saying you are doing this and that. If you came with somebody who is sick, now is the time to bring them out while we are praying. Please arrange them. Now is Mama's time. All, this, all our mothers, they can make their way now. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wings. The power and love our God is an awesome God. Our God Please clear the way for them. Awesome clear the way for sick people. From heaven above with wings. The power and love. Those under the anointing, just, just carry them and keep them gently somewhere. hallelujah now let's save time while we are praying for the sick all of you begin to submit your prayer request please i permit you to put on your phone if you need to call your loved ones to send you prayer requests call them because what god is doing tonight is unusual call them and tell them there's fire upon this place they should submit their prayer request ushers please begin to go around those online those who are connecting with us through the internet they can also connect by faith as we trust God for miracles. Worship team, please get set. You'll be giving us powerful worship songs. We'll just pray for our elderly ones. Let the Lord touch them and then he will give us peace. Please and please, um, when we pray for you, you clear the way. You do mighty things. You do glorious things. Stretch your hands and let's pray for our mother. Awesome is your name. You do mighty, you do glory, you do glory, you are a great God. Awesome is your name. Awesome is your name. May God use you to wipe the tears of your parents. Listen, let me tell you any child, hear me, I'm saying this especially to we young people. Any child that makes himself an instrument of pain to your mother do you know you bring a curse upon your life when you do that whatever spirit is bringing hardship on our mother and making her children not to succeed the way it should pray for her children in the name of jesus christ
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Well done, sir. Please sit down. Your dad. Welcome, sir. Straight, straight to the point. His legs have swollen because it's been long I saw him. Breathe well, and at the same time, he's having problem with mama. None of the children look at him except me. The same problem that mama is having, like this, but it's just similar thing. We are eight. Yeah. Oh, it's paining you, sir. We are going to pray for you right now, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, stretch your hands towards our daddy. Please participate in the service. That's why you came. Hallelujah. No, 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 daddy, sit down. Please sit down. Please, let's stretch our hands. 25 years of witchcraft. This is witchcraft. This is not sickness. 25 years of wickedness and oppression. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Let there be deliverance, oh God. Baba, I'm going to pray for you. Well, we are praying for you now. Jesus Christ is going to touch you. Father, let Baba return with a testimony. I lay my hands in the name of Jesus and I cancel the plague of witchcraft in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Please, after today, check him and don't cry. Don't cry, eh? Clean your tears. Clean your tears. Baba, they will watch you and they will see the improvement and you will let us know. Since it's not something we can check, you are already walking in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I pray in the name of Jesus that the power of God will come here right now. As I lay my hands upon you, I want you to believe. We all came here because we trust Jesus Christ and there will be a miracle. Those of you who are sitting down, be connecting to the healing anointing, you are the one who will be doing this. The goal is not for one person to do this. That as you are watching, something will come upon you. you do Thank you, Jesus. Things. You're a faithful God. Awesome is your name. You do my things. You do glorious things. You're a faithful God. Awesome is your name. You do mighty things, you do glorious things, you're our oh God, awesome is your name, you do mighty things, you do glorious things, you're a faithful God, awesome is your name. Look at a very serious situation. Can you flash this, this baby? Look at, can you believe, listen, can you believe for God's sake that this baby, as beautiful as this child is, the brain is not developing? Look at this. Who told you the brain is not developing? The doctor, and we've done CT scan. You've done CT scan. You have your evidence. They said the brain is not developing. Remember, remember our teaching. A body without a spirit. There must be a spirit that is stopping this brain. How can a baby like this? This is an apostle. This is a prophet. This is a great man. Oh, what male or female? Male. Male. Man of God in the making. And a spirit come. How would you like to have a child? That do you know what it means for the brain not to develop? That child becomes like an imbecile forever. In the name that is above all names we lay hands upon this child we are not only praying that god will heal him but god will use him my god i pray right now let the brain begin to develop we cause the spirit that is responsible for this wickedness right now in the name of jesus
out of her right now. Let her go. Out. Out of her. Out. Out. Release her right now. Let's hear what this madam is saying. Sorry, who brought her? I say I, I go village now. I'm mad from village. I go election. I will charm from village. Look at this. Mama went for election. They fired something upon her head. Now she's mad. Is she mad? Is she your talk now? Yes. You are mad. No, you are. You are not mad in the name of Jesus. Say I'm not mad. I'm not mad. In the name of Jesus. Whoever organized that charm on your head, it returns back to them sevenfold. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Mama, I'm praying for you right now. Every charm, every enchantment, you came to this place tonight. It ends in the name of Jesus. You are her daughter. You are her daughter. In the name of Jesus Christ. Even as it releases your mother, it releases you. Mama, you are free. In the name of Jesus Christ. What's wrong? Accident, sir. Accident. Yes, sir. This guy, for a long time, the spirit of death has been following you. Eh? Come. Do you know why the spirit of death is disturbing you? I'm looking at you. Don't feel embarrassed. Eh? I'm looking at you, but I'm seeing you smoking something. Eh? Tell me the truth. Don't tell lies. Yes, yes, this is what death would have killed you. You are smoking a. Uh, uh, what do they call this thing? Eh? In Jaham, you go. Yes, sir. Is that not true? Yes, sir. You are smoking. The devil wants to kill you. Yes, this is. Look at. Look at this. Look at this. Can you see this? Look at this. Because this is not the first time. Every time I see this guy, I see a whirlwind on his head. You, you know that the devil is after your life. You are now adding a go to it. Jesus came that you'll be saved. Are you getting me? You are ready to give your life to Jesus Christ. Genuinely. Eh? Oh, oh, you are, oh, you are still with those, your friends. Yes, sir. You are still with those, your friends. Yes, sir. We cancel those relationships right now. Yes. I'm seeing you sitting down with a group of people. Yes. They are smoking and they are giving you to smoke, but you are saying you have repented yes, and they are even laughing at you. Yes, you have to leave them. We cancel that relationship in Jesus' name. The Bible, hear me. Don't say I'm not doing it. But I'm sitting down where others are doing it. The Bible says, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful. He said, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on that law doth he meditate day and night. I curse that madness in the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray for supernatural healing. Look at me. Look at me. Lift your hands. Forget about the wound. Lift it up. Be careful. You broke the hand. Oh, it can't lift. Oh, I see. No, no, no. If it can't lift, don't, don't harm yourself. I thought you broke your bone. That's why I was asking you to lift it. Father, let there be a miracle right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. And anybody who smokes it, go in this place. If you know you smoke it, go. Or codeine. Altar. Once I make the altar call. Just run and come and kneel down here. Because tonight is your night of salvation. Please, don't play games with your destiny. Anything you smoke, anything you drink that is outside the jurisdiction of decency. The moment there's time for altar call, please make your way here. We love you. But then the Lord wants to touch you. Let's hurry up because our time is gone. Your name is here. Out.
Lord, I upon your feet. I'm going to be praying on the request right now. At the same time, an altar call is called. An altar call will be going. Those who need Jesus Christ, you are here right now, inside and outside. There are some of our brothers who are smokers and ladies. The ones that I spoke to. Now is the time. You can come before the presence of God. Don't feel bad. We're a family. And any other person. There are those who are saying, Lord, I'm tired of the way my life is. I need a new beginning. As we pray, please come and wait here. Join this lady very quickly. Celebrate them as they come, inside and outside. Please, let's save time. Celebrate them as they come, inside and outside. God bless you. A new beginning. God is giving you a new beginning. Don't be ashamed. Don't be embarrassed. You are saying, Lord Jesus, I make up my mind to walk with you. God bless you. God bless you. Koinonia, are you celebrating them? God is saving sinners. Keep coming from outside. Please clear the way for them if they are coming. Salvation is a very serious issue. Clear the way for them so that they'll come. Don't let any devil stop you. You are welcome. I know we're out of time. But please make your way to the front right now. Make your way to the front. We love you. No man condemns you. He can give you a new beginning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I salute every one of you here. I don't care what you have done or what you have not done. I want you to know that His Majesty can give you a new beginning. Hallelujah. Lift your right hand and say after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe in you. I believe you died and rose again. I'm tired of the way my life is. I surrender everything to you seriously and completely from this night take over my life be my Lord and Savior let your life come upon me I break free from habits from sins and everything that destroys my life from today I'm a child of God I am saved in the name of Jesus, let me pray for you. Lord, I thank you for these ones. Unashamedly, they have come before you. Preserve them by your power. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I pray that you will use them mightily. In the name of Jesus, I break the power of sin over your life. You will never return, especially for those of you who are victims of addictions and smoking. You will never return to it again in the name of Jesus Christ. That power is broken from off your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now I want you to follow a gentleman. They will have your details. And then on Tuesday unfailingly. Please be around. Um, meet with the prayer department. And um, they will fire you up. You will be with them for at least a month. They will guide you. The gentleman is waving his hand. Salute them everybody. Congratulate them. Stretch your hands towards a prayer request. In one minute. Please everybody rise. We are rounding up. Stretch your hands towards a prayer request. Your request is here. Begin to speak. Prophesy. Prophesy over it in the name of Jesus Christ. Prophesy over it. Prophesy over it. Lord, unto you that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Are you praying? Lord do miracles every spirit that is responsible for the troubles that are written here we judge that spirit every spirit every covenant every influence every spirit responsible for barrenness here yeah. responsible for any setback in the name of jesus we challenge it by the blood of jesus we challenge it by the blood of jesus we challenge it by the blood of jesus we challenge it lord let your people have testimonies in the name of the lord jesus christ in the name of the lord jesus christ we declare that every request every request that is presented here is turned into a testimony 
in the name of Jesus Christ and you will stand to testify before the people of God in the name of Jesus Christ I pray now lift your hands and receive the prophecy I decree and I declare over you every confusion in your life every cry for direction right now in the name of Jesus may you receive direction for the next level of your life receive direction for the next level of your life receive direction for the next level of your life every area of confusion I arrest it right now you will hear a voice from behind telling you this is the way in the name of Jesus Christ for those who are students I pray for your academics the exams that are about to come your best result in your various institutions this exam is what will produce it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ may you record five points in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ I pray for every family represented here whatever has stagnated your family by this anointing I declare move forward move forward move forward in the name of Jesus Christ everything that has covered your glory so that the glory of the Lord upon your life will not be seen in the name of Jesus we tear that veil off we tear that veil off by the power of the Holy Spirit whoever needs to help you before next miracle service I call them forth into your life mysterious helpers mysterious helpers in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for you fresh grace for prayer fresh anointing for prayer every lack of passion for the things of God I kill it right now in the name of Jesus every carnality and flesh and wordlessness and prayerlessness that is eating up your life it dies a natural death here tonight in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for you with these hands that are lifted go and begin to produce results go and heal the sick go and open doors for the oppressed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ I pray for families that are trusting God for miracle marriages we release those marriages right now I pray for families that are trusting God for miracle jobs we release those jobs right now please believe me as I pray we release those jobs right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ anyone here who the devil is eyeing for death that the devil has said you will not see the end of this year in the name of Jesus we lift up that embargo we lift up that embargo favor like you have never seen receive it right now open doors like you have never seen receive it right now breakthroughs like you have never seen receive it right now I speak life to every dying thing in your life in the name of Jesus Christ whoever has rejected you may they look for you in the name of Jesus Christ I command prophetic dreams mysterious spiritual experiences may God show you the solution to your problems in dreams and visions whoever is behind the failure of your life we command judgment upon them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ I prophesy unto you access to the mysteries of the kingdom access to deep revelation access to insight in the spirit whenever they are looking for men to favor may they find you may they find you in the name of Jesus you are blessed in the city and blessed in the country you are blessed in your going out and blessed in your coming in every tongue that rises up against you will be judged in the name of Jesus I declare that the seal of the blood is upon you you have no covenant with failure you have no covenant with death may God use you mightily 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 I declare may the mantle of honor 
come upon your life that mantle that makes men honor you mysteriously i release it upon your life receive it in the name of jesus receive it in the name of jesus the mantle of honor i pray for you extraordinary intelligence levels of mental acumen in the name of the lord jesus christ extraordinary intelligence I cast out the spirit of fear fear of the future fear of death I rebuke it from your life in Jesus name and every depression upon your spirit I release you from it right now every voice that has told you you will not succeed we cancel that voice right now in the name of Jesus finally I pray for you passion for the things of God hunger for intimacy with the holy spirit grace for fasting and prayer genuine fasting and prayer access to spiritual power activations of the gifts of the spirit visions and and the move of the spirit upon your life in the name of jesus christ father we give you all the praise in the name of Jesus. All those worshiping with us for the first time, please make your way to the front right now very quickly. We're really out of time. We have two minutes and we're out. Please celebrate all those who are worshiping with us. Some have come from far. Some from near different states. Please come. We have a prayer and a blessing for you. Celebrate them. Koinonia, keep clapping. They are coming. May God bless all of you who have invited them. Their lives will never be the same. In the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah for all of you who have come here this is koinonia god bless you for being here we're here every fridays is a meeting that is put together by eternity network international you're welcome to fellowship and worship with us again and again and your life will never be the same in the name of the lord jesus christ stretch your hands towards them saints of god and let's bless them we release the blessing upon this house over your life no keep standing don't worry you can stand I prophesy to you in the name of Jesus you will leave this place and return with dramatic testimonies whatever you came here with is turned into a testimony in the name of Jesus Christ I see two of you standing here there's miracle marriage coming for two ladies here specifically I'm seeing two ladies that's the reason why you came specifically I prophesied miracle marriage for you in the name of Jesus Christ for one of you the person you are going to marry is a banker and he will come to you before october your wedding will happen before december 31st in the name of the lord jesus christ we decree and declare over your life you will carry an unusual unction and everyone who sees you will know that you have come before the presence of god there is someone here you are standing you are going to have like one week of prophetic encounter stretch one week every night repeatedly you're going to have different people come to teach you certain things and on the sixth night you're going to have an impartation it's like a hand that will be laid upon you it's not demonic in the name of the lord jesus christ we bless you return with evidences return with testimonies in the name of jesus christ thank you so much for coming we love you and we honor you please follow the gentleman waving his hands they'll welcome you more warmly on our behalf and then you'll have a few details celebrate them koinonia hallelujah hallelujah hello beloved in christ we hope this message was a blessing to you i would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us too tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching in the name of jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise i decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall
Let the rain.